This is a pre- presentation of the Oklahoma Sports Network. Any other use of this telecast or any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the Oklahoma Sports Network's consent is prohibited. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be used without express written consent. And the winner, 2020 Cash High School Homecoming Queen, as decided by our student body, is Molly Ellis. Congratulations to all our nominees and their escorts. Good luck to our Bulldogs football team. Go Bulldogs! than just a job? Forest Foods in Lawton offers a career with a competitive starting wage, opportunity for advancement, life and health insurance, including medical, dental, and vision, as well as 401k retirement plan. At Forest, you can be proud of a company that gives back to the community. But most of all, you can take pride from making a quality product. Forest Foods, making the best tasting hot dogs and smoked sausages, the food America likes to eat. So come be a part of a winning team and start your path to success today. Do you suffer from knee or hip pain? Stop hurting and start moving with Mako Partial Knee and Total Hip Replacement. Comanche County Memorial Hospital is proud to be the first and only in Southwest Oklahoma to offer this minimally invasive technology. Surgeons perform procedures with a Mako Robotic Arm Assistant for accurate implant placement customized just for you. The result is improved surgical outcome, minimal hospitalization, rapid recovery, and relief from pain. To see if Mako is right for you, call us today. Nobody moves more real estate than pain. And that's why our clients keep coming back to us. We had some friends that recommended the Pam and Barry team and they exceeded all of our expectations. Our home sold in three days. It was a wonderful and easy experience. And we would love to help you. So follow the signs of Pam and Barry's team at Remax at 248-8800. We we're not bragging, bragging we're just applying for a job. Bridges and Buckner Dentistry at 1802 Northwest 52nd Street has over 32 years of combined experience. 
They serve Southwest Oklahoma for implant placement and final restorations using guided surgery and CEREC technology. This enables them to do same day crowns in the office. Call to set up your appointment today or visit them online at bridgesandbucknerdentistry.com. Want to take the stress out of your next remodel or building project? Comanche Home Center can deliver all the lumber, supplies, and tools right to you. When you're done, they'll pick up anything you don't use and give you credit towards your next project. Give Comanche Home Center a call today for a free estimate. Here at Carpet One, we have a great selection of carpet, hardwood, vinyl, tile, laminate, and area rugs. With all this, you're sure to find exactly what you want for your home. Come browse our exclusive selection or give Carpet One at Comanche Home Center a call today for a free estimate.
Nothing's come of all It goes electric wavy when I turn it on All through my city, all through my home We're flying up no ceiling when we in the zone I've got that sunshine in my pocket I've got that hot blood in my pocket It drops, I can't take my eyes off of it It's all phenomenally I'm the way we rock it So don't stop Under the lights and everything goes Feet. We use them every day, working, playing, and usually taking them for granted. If your feet hurt, see the professionals at Southwest Foot and Ankle Clinic. They've been serving Southwest Oklahoma for the past 36 years, providing the highest quality care and combining the latest technology with old-fashioned Oklahoma compassion. With three locations to serve you, Lawton, Duncan, and Altus. Call today or visit us online at swokfoot.com. 4D Landscaping and Irrigation has been providing top-rated professional landscape and irrigation services for the past 25 years. They take your vision for that perfect landscaping project for your home, new construction, or business and make it a reality with their easy financing options. You'll want to make sure to ask them about their seasonal services too. 4D Landscaping and Irrigation. Call 510-9983. Becker Raybon Funeral Home has been serving the funeral needs of Southwest Oklahoma since 1940 and is owned by the Raybon family. We believe family ownership makes a great difference in the care and service your family receives. Their staff is eager to find ways to assist you. Whether it's with live streaming or benefit assistance, we can help. When it comes to measuring personal levels of service, there are other funeral homes and then there is ours. Becker Raybon Funeral Home, 1502 Fort Sill Boulevard. At Bill Miller and Noble Heating and Air Conditioning, we take pride in our quality air conditioner and heater repair and replacement services, as well as providing the highest customer satisfaction. Bill Miller and Noble Heating and Air Conditioning has been serving Lawton and the surrounding area for over 25 years. We have the knowledge, equipment, and trained technicians to take care of all your heating and cooling needs. Give us a call. Bill Miller and Noble Heating and Air, 355-1811. Wayne's Drive-In in Lawton, a tradition since 1950, with two great locations at number 7 Northwest Sheridan Road and Wayne's 2 at 6810 Northwest Cash Road, serving the same old-fashioned hamburgers you know and love and grew up with. Maybe it's Wayne's Famous Steak Fingers, or maybe you're in the mood for a sissy cheeseburger, chicken sandwich, salad, pizza, or just an order of onion rings. And don't forget Wayne's Famous Sweet Tea or Cherry Limeade. Cruise on in before or after the game. Wayne's, number 7 Northwest Sheridan Road and 6810 Northwest Cash Road. Let's go to Wayne's!
leading to the deaths of over 3,000 men and women in New York City, Arlington, Virginia, and Shanksville, Pennsylvania. At this time, we all pause for a moment of silence in remembrance of those lost on this day in 2001. Thank you. This time we ask you to direct your attention to the south end zone as the pride of cash under the direction of Mr. Derek Grinder and Mr. Rob Miller. Honors America and those veterans both past and present who have fought to help keep us the land of the free and the home of the brave with the play of our national anthem. We are back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. We are uh, we're made aware of some uh, audio <laughs> technical difficulties we were having, and so we're going to go ahead and do the Lawton Heritage Pharmacy keys to the game once more, Vincent. Yeah, we'll kind of do the condensed, condensed version this time. One of the yeah. big keys to the game was to cover number 10, but number 10, Morgan Pearson, for Plainview, is likely to play quarterback tonight because their quarterback, number 19, Reese Taylor, potentially uh, is out tonight. Did not see him warming up. There was – Kind of got hurt towards the end of the Tuttle game. Looked like it might have been a collarbone situation. So the key to the game was to cover him because he is a great receiver. But uh, if he's limited to playing quarterback tonight, that may kind of limit some of their big plays on the outside because the rest of their team only has three receptions outside of him when right. he had, what, 12, 13 for the year or something yeah, 18, like that. 18. Yeah. So uh, obviously that key is kind of out. So he's going to be more of like your your Dorian Plumley that we faced against El Reno, probably more of a uh, one read throw a deep type quarterback and then look to look for him to use his legs a bunch tonight he's a d1 receiver he's a sophomore but getting d1 looks already so still need to cut cut down on his big plays and things like that one thing they run on offense a ton is powers and counters so we need to stop those so they got to read their keys and make sure that they're following the ball and things along those lines the big thing on offense is to block number 32 his name's Caden Pickens you find him you're probably going to find the ball tonight okay he's the best line according to coach Griffin he's the best linebacker that he's seen on tape since Curtis since Curtis Lofton. I mean, that's a big, big yeah. time. That's a big, big time comparison. Uh, he had 22 solo tackles against Tuttle. So that's yeah, just – Curtis Lofton played in the NFL. So. Right. So, I mean, 22 tackles in any type of game is phenomenal. So, yeah. if you find him, I think you're going to find the ball sometimes tonight. The big thing on offense, along with blocking him, is just to execute. No balls on the ground. Coach Griff, yes, we won 43 to nothing or whatever the score was last week and had big splash plays and things like that. But Coach, Coach Griffin was not happy with some of those balls that were on the ground. So, we need to make sure that we have no turnovers tonight, execute on offense. And that's kind of the keys to the game. Yeah, that's your Lawton Heritage Pharmacy keys to the game. Lawton Heritage Pharmacy, they make you feel glad you came in. Now for your splash pools and spas, starting line of splash pools and spas, let us show you the art of living well. We'll start with the defense first on the starting lineup. And not many changes here, and he's got the offense on the board. That's fine there. That's okay. Stay. We'll stick with the offense here. Talk about the offense for just a second. Offense, I mean, Got to be, got to be happy with what Shaw last week. Had a bunch of splash plays and things like that. Got a lot of people some reps, but uh, the big thing is we need to make sure that we don't put the ball on the ground. Kynell put one on the ground last week. Uh, we had a quarterback fumble, uh, quarterback center snap exchange fumble. So we need to make sure we're kind of taking care of that stuff. Look for a big game out of Hunter Tate. Look for a big game out of Kynell too, because this is the first four man front team that we've seen. So. Um, the, the trap plays are going to be a little bit more open and things like that. Also, the offensive line is going to be important tonight because we need to get to number 30.
We're back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network as we've had some technical difficulties. The Plainview is driving. We see Pearson at quarterback again with a few big runs, Vinny. Yeah, uh, while, while we were gone, uh, offense uh, went three and out there, punted the ball away. Then uh, Plainview had uh, two big runs by Blue Norman, and then they put uh, – Mr. Pearson back at quarterback, and he's had two big runs now, and they're inside of the red zone, uh, knocking on the door, a potential first score of the game. So, again, sorry about the technical difficulties. It looks like we're up and running again. And, yeah, that stuff, uh, that stuff happens. It's, yeah. We, luckily, we, we haven't missed a whole lot yet. Yeah, so, no, but yeah. Uh, like I said, four big runs there, yeah. kind of gashing us there. They ran two runs with number 22, Blue Norman, and then uh, number 10, Morgan Pearson, with some quarterback keepers, and get a big chunk yardage. Now the ball's on the ground. Yeah. That's good for the Cash Bulldogs. They're going to lose a few yards on that play. Yeah, it brings up a second and long there. Like we've talked about that till we're blue in the face. You don't like to see those second and longs at all because it puts the offense behind the sticks and uh, makes them a little bit more uh, difficult to pick up that first down. Not the start we wanted, obviously, not only for the Bulldogs, but also for the OSN crew up here. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but uh, all right. we're, we're back. Looks like we're live with you guys again. And. Uh, Second and 17, so they can get a first down, looks like, down to yeah, the one. Yeah, it looks like, yeah, about to the one-yard line there. So, 6-15 left and running first quarter. They take the snap, hand the ball. No, he nope, fakes it, fakes keeps it. it out to the left. There's a flag on the play. Where it's thrown by the line judge there, probably a holder block in the back, so probably that'll come back. Great job of ball handling, though, there by the quarterback. Kind of faked us out there for a second. Yeah. That's number nine, Tyler Winchester. Yeah, I thought we might see Pearson a little bit more quarterback tonight, but Winchester's come in there. We had while we were gone, Pearson played quarterback for for a couple plays there and had some big runs. But uh, looks like they're going to go with Mr. Winchester some. And and you know that's probably smart. And we talked we talked about you know you you want to be able to throw the ball. You still need to have the guys you can throw the ball to. You can't he can't throw the ball. You can try to throw the ball to yourself. It doesn't really work very right. well. No, it you doesn't. Know? So you bring in this guy and Tyler Winchester and again in the end for this team. Um, this is a non-district game, and so you know they're just they're trying to win, but they can try a few things out here. As uh, he Winchester leaves and Pearson does come back out, um, probably going back there behind center again for the Indians, and that is true with number 22. That's Blue Norman, um, offset to the side of him as he rolls out to the right, looking to throw, being chased everywhere. He's going to overthrow it and going to have a third down now, long third down, third down at 29. Yeah, you're going to have to show that every now and then. Obviously, you don't want to be completely one-dimensional when he goes at quarterback. So, second in a long way right there kind of shows the Cash Bulldogs that he does have the opportunity and does have the ability to throw. He's a big-time baseball player, so I assume he's able to, to throw the ball fairly well. So, Big third down here. You've got him in a long situation, not one that I would think they're super comfortable with, but – they do have field position on their side, so I mean, you technically down here, it's kind of a you know in those places. I don't know you'd ever punt the ball from the thirty, and so no, you probably have two plays to play with. Yeah, I think I think you're one hundred percent right there, Billy. I mean, there's no way uh, that you're going to probably kick a field goal from this distance, and there's no way you're going to really want to punt it. So you probably got two plays to to play with. But it looks like uh, they're going to call yeah, a timeout. Playing, you'll take a timeout. We'll take that with them. We'll be right back and. Just Looking for an opportunity to advance in the workplace? Republic Paperboard Company in Lawton, Oklahoma offers competitive wages as well as excellent benefits. Republic is a quality producer of paperboard products used in the manufacturing of gypsum wallboard with advanced technology and a committed staff and makes them one of the premier paperboard companies in the U.S. using 100% recycled paper fiber. Republic Paper partners with many local organizations to build a better community. Go to republicpaperboard.com. And we're back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network with Cash Bulldog Football. Cash has playing you in a long third down situation here. Third down and 29. They can't get a first down down to the one. We have six minutes left in the first quarter. I've been impressed with the running game so far for Plainview early in this. And, uh, but, you know, they're backed up now to the 30. Cash Bulldogs have them in a, a pretty good spot if they can uh, limit this play right here to, to not very much. Now Skeeter has the music cranking up over oh, there. Oh, always. <laughs> DJ, <laughs> DJ Screely Screel Screeter. Yeah. <laughs> Pearson takes the snap, going to fake the handoff, rush out to the right. Uh, Cash is all over that. That's George Harper who pushes him out of bounds. 
at the 29. Yeah, great job by the defense, just kind of stretching it out, stretching it out, stretching it out, and uh, Harper comes up from his uh, cornerback position to push uh, Pearson out of bounds there to bring up a fourth and forever. And you kind of in no man's land right here. Might uh, – yeah, it's, it's, I, I'm not a Excuse coach, me. and so I, I don't really don't know what. To, you well, I think you, you probably. I think you probably. It looks like they're going to bring Winchester in. I think you line up Pearson on the outside and just throw a jump ball and Take see if shot. he can go get it. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe what they thinking right here? Because I mean, you've got right. fourth and twenty-eight. You got. You can get. Yeah, it so looks like they're going to call another timeout though. Yeah, and their coach is not happy playing. No. He will call a timeout. We'll take that with them here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Sign Company has been serving Oklahoma and surrounding states for over 60 years. As a family owned business, our focus has always been on driving people to your door, not just selling you a sign. From custom sign design and manufacturing to installation and service, AeroSign has the knowledge and experience to deliver the ideal sign for you while using materials of the highest quality to ensure that your sign will look great for years and years to come. We design and manufacture our signs for longevity, so you get the greatest return on investment possible. AeroSign Company, helping your business thrive since 1955. Back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network as Plainview Indians get set for a fourth down and 28 with 5.54 left in the first quarter. And uh, they have Pearson up top near far sideline, and they will have Winchester taking the ball. And I think yeah. exactly what Vinny said is going to happen. They're going to try to throw it. Oh. George Harper comes up, knocks it away. Yeah, I mean, you, it's really a no-lose situation there. I mean, actually – Oh, we got a penalty, though, too, so let's see. It's Holding, be okay. Yeah, I mean, you're kind of in no man's land there. I know it's fourth and forever, but you got one of the better receivers in the state out there. Probably want to probably, – Winchester probably wants to put a little bit more air under that to see if uh, Pearson can jump up there and get it. But we talked a little bit about that on the first drive. Luke Edmondson was lined up right over top of him, and then George Harper was behind Luke, and so they were kind of bracketing and double-teaming him. So – it's going to be difficult for them to throw any deep balls like that if we keep that defense on all game. But uh, good job by him and good job by Harper. It would have been nice to get the pick, but it actually probably worked better in our favor yeah, to not oh, get yeah. it because it gives us a little bit better field position. Yes, yeah, Hunter Glenn goes under center. Hunter Tate in motion, fake the handoff to him. Kind of Daniels with a big hole, he and he has got a big hole as he breaks the tackle all the way down to the 33-yard line where there will be a, a little bit yeah, more. There will be a horse collar on the back side of that. Big run by Connell Daniels. First down for the Cavs Bulldogs, plus I believe that'll be 15. Yeah, I think so. Kind of, kind of a horse collar sling down tackle. Looked like he was out of bounds when he started to, to started to sling him down. So, had a big time run, and then we'll get 15 yards on top of it and bring us uh, inside the red zone, I guess. Yeah, the dead ball personal foul on the Plainview Indians. That'll be 15 yards added to the end of the play. Yeah, kind of went out there, uh, had, an, had an issue in the first drive. We kind of lost the uh, signal there on the, on the third down play. On the third down play, Hunter Glenn hit, hit Jalen Nido, uh, but it was third and very long and came up a little bit short, so then we punted the ball away. So first big run of the night for us. Got Hunter kind of handoff again up the middle. Gave him about – Four yards on the play. That's one of those trap plays that we haven't seen much of so far this year because Coach Griffin talked about it a little. He doesn't like to run it all the time against three-man fronts just because of the way that the defensive line is set up. But tonight is the first time we're playing a four-man front team. So look to see some of those trap plays throughout the game. Antonio Austin onto the field. George Harper off. Also number 16, Reed Line on the far sideline is Hunter Glenn. Hands the ball up the middle, Kynell Daniels again. A gain of about two yards on the play. Yeah, kind of a counter play there, fake, kind of faking the speed sweep and then faking it to uh, faking it to Antonio Austin, and then coming back behind that with Kynell. Be a big pickup here. Third down and four. 
Antonio Austin behind Hunter Glenn. Seeing if we could jump. Now we're going to get a timeout and talk this one over. Another timeout on the field. This one by the Cash Bulldogs. We'll take it with them right here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Con Selmer, guitars from Ibanez, Paul Reed Smith, and Siegel. The latest in music tech from Roland, Yamaha, and Line 6. And a great selection of recording hardware and software. All at the best price with great local service and lessons available on most instruments. Visit philipsmusic.com to shop online or stop by. Philips Music, 107 Southwest Sheridan Road. Back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Third down and four for the Cash Bulldogs with 432 left in the first quarter. Hunter Glenn's going to throw the ball out. Not much doing there for Jalen Nido. Bring up a fourth down for the Cash Bulldogs. Yeah, Blue Norman on the outside there kind of read that one good. And a lot of times you're trying to get the ball in space. And Jalen needs to make that man miss. And would have picked it up, but uh, great job by Blue Norman there on the outside. To I think we're going to see Eli Angel's first field, field goal of the year, yeah, 2020, and I've been very happy uh, watching him. He's a, a very nice kicker. His kickoffs have been great. No chance for the field goal here. The field it's goal like, is good by Eli Angel. Oh, no. he missed it. It's hard to tell from the angle up here. They said it's no good, and so. Cash unable to put any points on the board. We're still at 0-0 with 3.51 left in the first quarter. Yeah, not exactly the start we have uh, we envisioned uh, coming out tonight, but uh, still nothing-nothing and got a long game ahead of us. Eli Angel, of course, replacing Ralph Alwa, who is up in Wyoming. Wyoming. Yeah, um, Preferred walk on up there. Uh, they were, uh, I don't know how that battle ended up. I haven't seen it in a couple of weeks, but I know that was open to him and he had a chance at that. And so I think that, I think I was talking to Coach Griffin a little last week about him and where he was, where he was and what was going on. I think his team is in the big sky and I think they are not playing, at least in the fall. Mm, okay. Uh, I believe, and I could be. Don't quote me on that because it's hard to keep up. <laughs> Everything with. is so different. It's right hard now. to yeah, keep I up mean, with, with Notre Dame's in the ACC now. Right. right. I mean Notre Dame. Yeah, Notre Dame's <laughs> playing uh, playing the ACC, and my alma mater UNA is going to play four games in the fall and maybe six in the spring or something crazy and weird. Yeah. Um, it's it, it's a it's an interesting time in college football and. Glad that we've got Friday nights here in Oklahoma for high school football. So Morgan Pearson takes the ball, the snap, and hands it off to number 12. That's Hunter Young. Fights for a couple of yards on the play. Yeah, Joseph Brown was not yeah. letting that jersey go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he got his big paws on that. He wasn't letting yeah. go of it. We definitely have a distinct size advantage. Um, and not. I, I think mostly well, every team we play this year, we're going to have a size advantage on the front. Uh, our, our offensive line and defensive lines are, are large and in charge there. So, um, But it definitely is noticeable tonight. Um, so look for them to get some penetration throughout the night and start to wear on the, the offensive line as the game moves forward. Hunter Young again in the backfield with Pearson at quarterback. Pearson takes the snap, hands it again off to Hunter Young, breaks a couple of tackles, able to get the first down all the way up to the 34-yard line. Yeah, they've had some big gash runs tonight for us. I mean, it, they're, it's kind of a read-type offense with Pearson back there, and uh, he's made, made some good reads. He's pulled a couple and, and had some big yards there, and that time he gave it to Hunter Young, and Hunter Young was able to get some big yardage. And he for first couple drives that, that well the first drive second drive of theirs that we missed, Blue Norman had some big runs as well. So need to shore that up a little. And it's Pearson back there again with Hunter Young. Two wide receivers to the right, one down the bottom of your screen. Handoff will again to be to Hunter Young up the middle, and there's absolutely yeah. nothing happening right there as Andrew Tom stuffed that. Great job of the defensive line there to kind of get some push and penetration, and Brady Wise was in there to get the big hit from the linebacker position. He's filling in tonight, I think, for Zach Johnson. Zach Johnson 
down there in street clothes. Hopefully uh, it's just a minor little bruise and uh, got the big week off next week to kind of get ready for district play, and hopefully he'll be back uh, ready next week for district play. Second 11, 208 left in the first quarter. Pearson goes far sideline now. Again with Pearson on the outside there. Luke Edmondson lines up over top of him. George Harper behind him. So we're kind of bracketing him and making sure that uh, we've got two guys on him at all times when he's out there at the receiver spot. There's a flag on the play. Let's see. It might be pre-snap, so it's probably offsides or maybe. Oh, that'd be offsides on the cash defense. Give five yards. We'll do second down all over again. They'll make it second and six. Yeah, somebody must have lined up in the neutral zone, I guess. And, and Tyler Winchester back there at quarterback. If you are a Plainview fan and you're just joining us, maybe you didn't know uh, Reese Taylor uh, is not playing in this game, the normal starting quarterback, the, the leading rusher and the leading passer. And so Plainview has had a couple of guys back there, including Pearson and Winchester. Pearson far sideline and uh, Winchester at a quarterback right now. And the handoff's going to be up the middle again. A lot of room there. Not much doing on the outside as far as Cash Bulldogs being there. And that's number 16, Reed Line, coming up with the tackle, saving a touchdown. Yeah, that's their big linebacker there. Caden Pickens. What they're doing is since we're lining up with two people over over Pearson, they're just running the ball away from him, which we've got one less defender on that side, and uh, just kind of gashing us for some big plays there. So it's kind of pick your poison. I mean, obviously you don't want Pearson to beat you on the outside, but uh, if things continue this way with the running game running away from Pearson, uh, we may have to make a, a change there. Number nine, Tyler Winchester comes back in. You nailed that. That's exactly what's going on. Just the focus. I mean, they, he, he, he requires a lot of attention. Yeah. And so Winchester back there again at quarterback, hands the ball off up the middle to number 22. The nice little gain again there. That is Blue Norman. Yeah, because kind of like to reiterate that, I mean, what you're doing is you've got nine, you've got, uh, you've got 11 players on both sides, and you're kind of bracketing him. So now you're kind of playing ten, nine on ten, and they're just seeing where that uh, extra defender is not and running right towards that position. Be a second and two, maybe a short three here. And here's the crazy thing about Pearson. I mean, he's a sophomore. Yeah, he's a young so, guy. So, I mean, he's young. I mean, look for big things out of him in the next couple of years. He's at the bottom of your screen, Tyler Winchester at quarterback. They hand the ball again up the middle to number 22, and this time the catch defense stops Blue Norman in his track. So will bring up a third down and short for the Plainview Indians. Just got uh, – just made it clarified. Wyoming is in the Midwest Conference, and uh, their season is Mount, postponed. I think they're Mountain West maybe. Oh, I don't know. That's just, <laughs> I think that's the Mountain West Conference. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, somebody, somebody let us know. Actually, that somebody is Mr. Christian Lawyer. Let us know <laughs> that uh, Wyoming is in the Midwest. Football season postponed. Looking at options to resume, but nothing concrete. There you go. So that, That's how we're going to end the first quarter here. All tied up at zero. Not a whole lot going on here early in this game. We'll be right back with your second quarter on the Oklahoma Sports Network. here on the Oklahoma Sports Network as we get set for the second quarter, all tied up at zero with the Cash Bulldogs and the Plain View Indians here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. We want to thank our second quarter sponsor, Vincent Saylor State Farm. Like a good neighbor, Vincent Saylor State Farm is there. You can call Vinny at 580-699-2771. Yeah, not off to the start that we expected. A little sluggish there. Had some had a big run by Kynell, but outside of that, not much offensively. And then defensively, like I said, they're doing a good job of of running away from wherever Pearson lines up, and uh, they're kind of outnumbering us on that one side. And 
So look for us to make some adjustments as the game moves forward. Brings up a big third down, though, right here. Be big to get a lost yardage play right here and force them into a longer fourth down play. It's Winchester out there again, a quarterback. Pearson down at the bottom of your screen. A way to get this thing ready to go, and they got the sign. We can go ahead and get this live now. Winchester in there, quarterback again. Takes the snap, and it's going to be a handoff up the middle. A lot of room yeah. by that big linebacker. That's Caden Pickett. Oh, no, no, no. He fumbled. the ball. That's going to be a touchback. That is going to be a – let's see what they say here. That's going to be a touchback. Before he got into the end zone. It's going to be only a question big is, call. Yeah, the only question is – yeah, touchback. It is a touchback. So, if we had instant replay, we'd, you know, especially like a close-up instant replay, we'd be able to see what happened there. But – if he lost that ball before he well, crossed he the goal line. He definitely lost it before the goal line. I think what, what uh, Plainview is a little upset about is they're thinking that he might have recovered it in the, end zone. in the end zone before the ball went out of bounds. But the referee was right there on top of it and knew it right away, and that's going to be a touchback. It's going to be cash ball. As it is, Woo! that will be a touchback, and the cash bulldogs will – that's a turnover. Yeah, so it is it. absolutely a turnover. I mean, it's an unforced turnover. If you're playing view, you're not happy about that. Um, coach, obviously, on that side is is not agreeing with it. But the, the ball is yeah. obviously out. I think the I think the complaint he potentially has is was it recovered in the end zone? That's Hunter Glenn. by Pickens. That's Hunter Tate in motion, fake the handoff to him. Will be handed up to Andrew Toms, I believe. Gain of about three on the play for Andrew Toms. Bring up a second seven. Yeah, Plainview's defense is doing a great job on against our offense. They're uh, outside of that long run by Connell, really haven't been able to get anything going. They've uh, they've been right in position every time we've ran ran stuff, and so look for us to maybe. Hunter Tate in motion again. This time the handoff will be to Connell Daniels on the go. outside. Uh, unable to shake a man, but he gets the cash bulldog first down. Yeah, good run right there by Kynell to pick up the first down. Got a little momentum going on this drive. Would love to punch this one in and kind of – it's a little bit quiet in Allwork Stadium right now. I think people are kind of on their hands right now, kind of wondering what's going on, expecting big things out of homecoming week. and. Hunter Tate in motion. This time the ball will go up to Andrew Toms. Big hole Big up hole. the middle. Another first down for the Cash Bulldogs. The offensive line creating a massive hole. Yeah, great job of the offensive line there. Great job by Toms finding that hole and busting right through for the big, big yardage run there on first down. Cash Bulldogs now are driving 47. 10.55 left to go. In the second quarter, as Cash looks to the sidelines to see what's going on here as far as what they want to call. On offense, Hunter Glenn goes up under center. Hunter Tate going in motion. The handoff again will be this time to Kyle Daniels. Daniels. He's stacked up at the line, a gain of about two on the play. Again, you can see number 32. He's everywhere. Caden Pickens again on the tackle. Yeah, we talked about him a little bit during pregame. Talked to him a little bit. About him during pregame, had 22 solo tackles against Tuttle. That's an unbelievable number when you think about it. Um, so, like we talked about, where wherever he is, the ball is likely <laughs> going to be there as well. So, Second and seven for the catch. Bulldogs, Hunter Tate again in motion. Handoff will be to Kynel Daniels. Again, not much there. The, the plan to your defensive line has really done a nice job <laughs> earlier, stacking Kynel Daniels outside of that big run. Yeah, we yeah we so we kind of talked about that. We've got a size advantage there, but they're obviously using their quickness and their technique and and doing a good job of not getting blown off the ball and and kind of holding those guys up or, or using their speed and their hands to kind of get around some of our offensive linemen. And we don't see those big holes that we're used to seeing. And brings up a third down now. Yeah, third and five. The Cash Bulldogs. I know Daniel's the lone back behind Hunter Glenn. It's going to be a quick pass out to Hunter Tate, who's going to be able to get the first down all the way down to the Plainview 38-yard line. Yeah, right there in that formation, you kind of know that the ball's going to go to Hunter. I think Hunter Glenn kind of looks out there, sees if they have the numbers. If there's only two out there on our three, he's going to throw that every time. If there's three out there, he might hand it off to Kynell and, and, and bust it up the middle, kind of like what they're doing to us right now, just kind of finding where, where they're not and uh, running that way. 
George Harper in motion from left to right. Kind of Daniels gets the ball up the middle, gain of about three on the play. They're trying to use that motion to, like we said earlier in the pregame, to try to get that linebacker. You're trying to get him to look one way, maybe move one way, and then try to come back. The way. But 32, I've been watching him uh, <laughs> the last drive, this whole drive here. And he is a – he's a stud. Uh, Coach Griffin was right. He said 22 tackles against Tuttle. He had 11 the week before against Pilot Point, 33 tackles in two weeks. Uh, they stick him at middle linebacker, so, you know, he can pretty much flow wherever he needs to. And he's definitely the talented player we thought he uh, was. As George Harper goes in motion, and the handoff is to George Harper. He's got the edge, and he's going to get that all the way down to the 22-yard line. Another first down for the Cats Bulldogs. Yeah, great job by the Cats Bulldogs. Oh. Jalen Nido on the outside, Kynell on the outside as well. Blocking for Harper there and was able to get the edge and get a big yardage run there. Kind of came up a little gimpy there, kind of a – not really a horse collar tackle, but kind of rolled up on the back of his leg. So probably just need to stretch it out a little. And you know, George Harper early in this season too. I've been watching him quite a bit, and he's been a nice surprise. Yeah, he's been a great surprise for us. Kind of a, a new player this year, so he's done a great job uh, kind of filling that uh, Christian Daniel role from last year, Blake Young. Um, it's Hampton Kynell Daniels up the middle, and touchdown. he is able to put it in for a catch. Bulldogs touchdown. Great job of the offensive line there. Great job by Kynell finding that hole, putting his foot in the ground, and going straight up field for the big touchdown there to get us on the board. Feel and kind of sense that sigh of relief in the crowd right now. So good job to get on the board there. Cash Bulldogs strike first. Another Kynell Daniels off to a great start in this game. Cash looks at their swing gate. Sometimes, as we saw last week against yeah. Altus, they will take advantage of this if they need to. If they see something there, they will go for the two. But it looks like Eli Angel is going to attempt the point after to try to make this game 7-0. to zero. Yeah, the swing gate, I mean, if you can get an extra point on the board at some point, it's not a bad idea to do it. But Plainview <laughs> lined up the way that they wanted it, and so got the one on the board, 7-0. Yeah, as, as extra point, 7 nothing. Cash Bulldogs lead on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Go. Are you looking for more than just a job? Forest Foods in Lawton offers a career with a competitive starting wage, opportunity for advancement, life and health insurance, including medical, dental, and vision, as well as 401k retirement plan. At Forest, you can be proud of a company that gives back to the community. But most of all, you can take pride from making a quality product. Forest Foods, making the best tasting hot dogs and smoked sausages, the food America likes to eat. So come be a part of a winning team and start your path to success today. Back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network with the Cash Bulldogs strike first and lead this game seven to nothing over the Plainview Indians here and a beautiful night. Kind of getting cloudy and dark here in Cash, Oklahoma at Ulrich Stadium. Always nice to be back in the friendly confines here as we get set for another Wayne's drive in kickoff. Come on, everyone. Let's go to Wayne. It's Kyle Daniels with the big run to cap off that drive. Yeah, great job there by the offensive line. The entire drive kind of uh, used our size finally, and they created some big holes there. Kynell found some found some running room in a couple plays. Uh, I think Andrew Thomas had a had a carry or two there. George Harper on the big run as well. Hunter Tate on the uh, little flare pass there was able to get some big yardage there as well. So great job of. Uh, of kind of running the ball right at them that drive and kind of imposing our will a little and taking the big 7 nothing lead here early in the second quarter. As the Cash Bulldogs get back out onto the field, playing the Indians as well. Some scores from around the state. Elgin down 21-7 to against Blanchard in the second quarter. Poto leading over Alma 26-3. Elk City up big on Guyman. 41 to nothing. Tuttle and Newcastle in a tight one with five minutes left in the second quarter tied up at 7. As again, we're ready for another Wayne's drive-in kickoff. Come on, everyone. Let's go to Wayne's. Eli Angel gets set to kick this off for Cash Bulldogs as they have a 7 to nothing lead early in this game. See how the Plainview Indians respond here. I believe they do have Pearson back deep. Yep. You'll see him on the far side of your screen at about the five-yard line. And the camera moves that way, and the ball will go to him. It's going to go and into the end, end zone, zone, though. So that will be a touchback in high school. <laughs> 
Yeah, great job there. I mean, last time we kicked it to the one, and they got it out to the 41-yard line. Uh, Pearson was able to use his speed and kind of bust up the middle there for a 40-yard return. So glad to get that one through the end zone and uh, make them go 80 yards. Unfortunate a, end to their last drive. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and they, uh, we're driving and fumbled it through the end zone there. I guess we don't have uh, – we have to trust the officials here. We don't have all the replay you know, abilities that – Maybe the major broadcasting right, networks have. Right. They've got 20 cameras around and the whole crew outside here. But uh, we'll trust their best of judgment on that. Um, that would have been a great one for the pylon cam. That Oh, well, yeah, that would have <laughs> been. Yeah, pylon cam would have been all over that one. As Pearson is in the backfield again at quarterback. So he takes the snap, hands the ball, fakes the handoff, yep. keeping himself. Nothing there at all. Maybe one at best. Probably back to the line of scrimmage. So right on that play, that's kind of a read play there. He's reading that defensive end. If that defensive end squeezes down, he's going to give the ball on the – on the outside speed sweep, but defensive end kind of went out with that speed sweep guy, and he kept the ball right up the middle. No gain on the play. Second and ten. Eight minutes left in the second quarter. Plainview Indians bring in a substitute. Not in any hurry. You can tell they're not really a up-tempo type of team. No, no. Taking their time. No, they uh, – I don't think El Reno or – Alta's kind of got in a huddle, so it's the first time we've seen a huddle so far this year from an opponent. A lot of room there on the outside for number 22, Blue Norman, as he's able to get another plain view first down. Yeah, Blue Norman's got some good runs so far tonight. Uh, most, every time he's kind of got his hands on the ball, I mean, you're looking at 15, 20 yards, so uh, kind of need to corral him a little and corral this running game. They kind of have uh, – we talked about we imposed their will on that uh, dr touchdown drive for us, but uh, right now they're kind of imposing their will on us and making some big yardage runs. Referees are signaling to stop the clock, but it looks like it's still rolling. It's still going. So Winchester brings out the offense back onto the field here. Low snap, hand the ball up. The middle again. Got some room there. <laughs> Aiden Robinson there holding on for dear life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he uh, grabbed him by the jersey. And thank goodness he did. Yeah, because yeah, he could have been could have been a lot bigger of a gain there, but uh, was able to grab on his jersey and then kind of squat down a little to try and bring him down and get some leverage. Another nice gain up to uh, the 47-yard line. That'll bring up a second and four. Yeah, their run game is really impressive so far. Um, when Taylor is back there, quarterback number 19, the first two games, they were kind of multiple. They, they threw the ball about as much as they ran the ball. With him out tonight, they're kind of sticking to their ground game, and they're getting some big chunk plays. Again, A lot of room one. again up the middle. That's number 12 this time, Hunter Young. Another first down for playing the Indians. So they have another drive going. 6.25 left in the second quarter. Again, we want to uh, – we have a uh, OSM Player of the Week here, right? Uh, Jeffrey Pattyacre. Yeah, Acre. Jeffrey Pattyacre voted on by the, by the fans, uh, was able to beat out some other talented players, uh, and got the OSN Player of the Week. We'll be doing that weekly throughout the season, so check our Facebook page out. And there's a flag on the play. As yeah, it looks Young. like that will probably come back. But, again, a big chunk yardage play there. It might have been a chop block, but we'll see what they uh, – Yeah, Jalen got up a little – no hold. They're call hold. Yeah, Jalen got up a little gingerly there, kind of. Hopefully he'll be okay because he's a big part of our defense and offense. Yeah. Yeah, like Vinny said, every week on Saturday you can catch all the scores on the Facebook page and then – you can nominate a player, and then you can go vote for that player. A lot of interaction last week. Players getting nominated from, from all over the state. Right. We, we appreciate that and everybody uh, paying attention to that. And, of course, Jeffrey Pattyacre able to come up with a week one award there. I want to congratulate him. That, that's a big thing. These offensive linemen, a lot of times, they really don't get a lot of credit. And, man, they, you know, they, they put in just as much work, work as anybody else, and they really a lot of the time they don't get the spotlight because it's the guys yeah. that get the ball, right? They are definitely the unsung heroes of every football team, and, and every good football team, it all kind of starts up front. So that's an offsides. Yeah, it's Winchester gets okay, the snap, but they're not going to call anything no. there. And Interesting. Yeah. 
Everybody moved before the snap actually. Happened. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, but uh, not much, not much going on there again for Plainview. So that'll bring up a another long play here. Second down, second about 24. Yeah, those offensive linemen, like I said, I mean, don't always get the credit that you uh, that they deserve, because uh, like you said, they're not the the pretty guys on the outside <laughs> running the ball and and scoring the touchdowns and things like that. But it isn't nothing's po possible without them up front. So Winchester fakes the handoff and he's being chased and does a good job of getting yeah. outside there. Maybe we'll get back up to uh, – they're going to call him out at the 43. So, a gain of only about two on the play. Yeah, was able to kind of get the edge. Brady Wise looked like he was going to get him in the backfield, but he was able to kind of get the edge on him and pick up a couple yards. And that brings up a third and long. Maybe a situation here again where they – Again, for you Cash Bulldog fans that say, what in the world's going on? We're playing the 3A team. This 3A team is a very talented team. Uh, played Tuttle within two touchdowns last week. Tuttle, uh, every year, one of the best teams in 4A. And so Cash does have the lead here, 7 to nothing. Third and 22, 450 left. It's Pearson back at quarterback. They're going to roll him out to the right. He is not even thinking about throwing. Great job. They're going to run the ball. And, yeah. Great Cash job. defense all over that. Great job by Hunter Tate right there to kind of wrong shoulder that uh, wrong shoulder Blue Norman there to kind of make him go inside of that. And the rest of the defense was able to uh, rally to the ball and bring up a big third down stop. So that way they punt it away here. Should have pretty good field position, Pearson. Last time he did kind of low, yeah. yeah, low line drive, kind of catch playing at second. Got it. Almost. Oh, it is blocked. Reed Lyon. He's got a chance. He's got a chance. There's nobody on the outside. He gets a block. Woo! It's a big block from Hunter Tate. Uh, and they're going to throw blind, a flag. You can't blindside anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have a I player mean, down. And we're going to go ahead and take a timeout here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Suffer from knee or hip pain? Stop hurting and start moving with Mako Partial Knee and Total Hip Replacement. Comanche County Memorial Hospital is proud to be the first and only in Southwest Oklahoma to offer this minimally invasive technology. Surgeons perform procedures with a Mako Robotic Arm Assistant for accurate implant placement customized just for you. The result is improved surgical outcome, minimal hospitalization, rapid recovery, and relief from pain. To see if Mako is right for you, call us today. Nobody moves more real estate than Pam and Barry's team. And that's why our clients keep coming back to us. We had some friends that recommended the Pam and Barry team, and they exceeded all of our expectations. Our home sold in three days. It was a wonderful and easy experience. And we would love to help you. So follow the signs of Pam and Barry's team at REMAX at 248-8800. We're, we're not bragging, bragging we're, we're just, just applying, applying for a job. Back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network, that was Morgan Pearson, number 10, for the Plainview Indians. He got up and he was able to walk off the field. That's good to see there. They did call a, uh, a blindside block, or, yeah, blindside block on Hunter Tate. Uh, you know, uh, this game they're trying to protect the players, and I get yeah. that right there. Obviously, uh, rattled him pretty pretty good. Uh, he got up and he, I think he'll be okay. We'll maybe we'll see what's going on as we go throughout this game. But he did get up and walk, walk off the field, which is important. Yeah, he got up under his own power and was able to walk off the field under his own power. So that's a good thing. Like I said, I mean, it's a, it's a, uh, probably about three or four years ago they made an emphasis on player safety, and that was one of those things that they kind of looked at. Uh, there's no more wedge busters on kickoffs. There's no more of those crackback blocks and things like that. It's difficult for you not to. I mean, Hunter Tate, I mean, it's difficult not to do that block because at the end of the day, you're blocking for your teammate and things. So uh, it's an unfortunate situation. Glad to see him get up and, and walk off on his own power. So hopefully he's uh, he's able to come back in later on during the game. And Scores from around the state. Tuttle now leads Newcastle 14-7 to in the second quarter. Poto with a 30-point lead over Alma Vian and John Marshall. John Marshall been one of the surprises coming up from 3A to 4A, playing well early in the season, down 8-6 against Vianne. Wagner, number three, 
down 3 nothing to Tahlequah in a, a game you guys are probably interested in here, at least on the, on the 4A cash side. Uh, Weatherford leads O Reno 13-0 in the second quarter with eight minutes remaining. Blanchard also now for 21 to see 21 to 7 lead over Elgin. That game with seven minutes left in the second quarter as Hunter Glenn brings the cash offense back out onto the field. To clarify that El Reno situation, I think yeah. that game is gonna look a little different uh, as on paper. Uh, Plumley, my understanding, is out for several weeks right now because of a broken foot. Um, Hunter going Glenn deep right drops here. deep. Got Hunter Tate. Tate. He cuts back in, makes a nice move down <laughs> to about the 27. Yes, yeah, so kind of going back to great, great throw and catch right there. Um, Hunter to Hunter, as we talk about throughout the year, and looks like Hunter's helmet came off, so he'll probably have to come out for a play. Getting a little – obviously Plainview's not happy with Hunter at the moment, so probably getting a little chippy with him. Hunter <laughs> likes to – Say a few words every now and he then. He is a con <laughs> what I call a confident young man. Oh yeah, absolutely, and, and and you have to be playing that type of position, and and I mean being as talented as he is, I mean he he doesn't usually cross the line or anything like that. So confidence is uh, is king in football, that's for sure. But yeah, going back to that El Reno situation with Plumlee out there, not the same team, obviously. So uh, as the season moves forward, it's going to be they might lose some games that they probably. Sh that earlier in the season, you'd have thought that they would have won. So, um, yeah, we'll keep that timeout right here. We're gonna we can talk about that for just a minute. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like I said, last week they lost to uh, Piedmont, I think. So they're one and one right now. Weatherford's up on them, thirteen nothing. But I mean, it's not the same team that we played um, because Plumlee was such a big, full, such a big um, part of their offense and and part of their defense to a certain degree. So, um, well, he's one of the best players in the state, right? So, I mean. Um, as they move forward in the season, if they, if they lose some games here and there, we need to remember that the team that we played is not the same team that's going forward right now, not the same team that Weatherford's playing tonight. So, First and ten for the Cash Bulldogs. 3.38 left in the second quarter. Ball on the 29-yard line. Three line goes in motion. Handoff will be to the outside to Kino Daniels. What a job by Patty Aker right there, kind of getting that pancake block again on the defensive end and allowing Kynell to get on the outside for a big first down run. About eight yards on the play. Kynell off to a big start tonight. Patty Aker likes when he gets those pancake blocks and then uh, makes sure that his guy doesn't get up and just that, kind of lays on top know, of him. That, that looks really good on the huddle, you know, the recruit tape where <laughs> right. they, they point the arrow and they're like, look at this guy yeah, right here. And he's right. like, hey, this is me right here. Watch this. Exactly. <laughs> Second and three now, three just at three minutes left in the first half. Andrew Toms and Kyle Daniels. Hunter Tate goes in motion. Handoff will go to Andrew Toms up to the right side, gain of about three on the play. Yeah, it looked like he was able to look like he was potentially going to squeeze out of there, but uh, good job there by Caden Pickens right there in the middle of things as always, making yeah. a tackle. I still can't get over twenty two tackles in a game. Yeah, that's a, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a lot of work. That young man, you know, on, on Saturday, he's, he's pretty tired and beat up, I'm oh, sure. Oh, I would imagine. We have a third down and real short here. Very likely that Hunter Tate's going to go in motion, and the handoff's going to go. Oh, it's fake. Oh, fake right here. Nice job Glenn by Kyle Daniels getting a block on the outside. Going to pick up the first down. Hunter Glenn doesn't run much. Yeah. Um, doesn't run, he's not, I mean, not that he's not capable. Um, he's got he's got several rushing touchdowns so far this year, but uh, <laughs> yeah, those are definitely quarterback sneaks. But when he has the opportunity to run, he usually gets positive yards there. And right there, kind of a little – everybody was keyed in on Kynell since it was a short uh, yardage play and good little fake there. And comes out the back end. He picks up the big first down. But like I said, good job by Kynell as well. Entertain motion. Kynell Daniels will get the ball and all the way down to the eight-yard line. Gain of seven, another big first down run. Looks like the offensive line is starting to maybe wear out the plain view. Uh, yeah, front. we talked a little bit about that. We've got a big size advantage throughout the game as this game moves forward. I mean, those big bodies start leaning on those little bodies, and, I mean, it's, uh, it's only a matter of time before you start wearing out a little. Kyle Daniels and Andrew Toms behind Hunter Glenn. It's going to be a quick pass out to Hunter Tate, who drops Fumbled the it. ball. It'll be a catch and a fumble. 
Yeah, that's twice tonight he's kind of put the ball on the ground. That's unlike him. Uh, it's not going to make uh, Coach Griffin happy because that was one no. of the emphasis points that he had throughout the week. We we put too many balls on the ground last week, and that's already the, at least the second one that I'm aware of right now that we've put on the ground. So going to have to work on that ball security during the off week a little. Uh, Carlos Harbin, top of your screen, Hunter Tate goes in motion. The handoff will be to Kyle Daniels, who's got all kinds of room on the outside. He's in. able to put it in for another cash bulldog touchdown. Kyle Daniels. Great job by Kynell right there. Great job by the offensive line and gets us out to a 13-0 lead. Alden Connerman out here liking it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Before the play. What? So they're going to say that they called the timeout before the play? <laughs> it's okay. Interesting. Again, yeah, again, we'll keep that here. We don't have much time left here before, about minute 30 before half. That's an uh, interesting uh, – Interesting call there. Didn't hear a whistle, but uh, obviously we're way up here in the press box, so it is what it is. The touchdown will not count. Nope. It will be wiped off of the board for the Cash Bulldogs. Take that back to 7 to nothing lead again here. Hopefully get, you get to hear me say that again here yeah. real soon. Let's give it right back to Kyne Ellis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same play. It's like the uh, old school uh, practice – when you you know you run the play and coach line it up again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and again. Same play. And Can we get this right? <laughs> yep. Yeah, thank you guys for joining us here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. We're proud to be a part of your Friday evening here. Catch next week, got an off week. Next week, yeah, got an off week. Next week, co talking to uh, Coach Grip and Eric uh, Sharon there was uh, on the coach's show, doing the coach show for OSN, talking to Coach Griffin. Coach Griffin talked about that off week. He likes scheduling it that yeah. way because it uh, gives him an opportunity to know what his team is capable of, what they need to work on, give them that week prior to district opening to kind of work on those things, uh, kind of get some bangs and bruises and things like that fixed and get into this district rolling because this is going to be a tough, difficult district run this year because obviously – you uh, know what you get in Weatherford. Weatherford's number one in the state right now. You know what you kind of get with Clinton. Uh, Chickasha is always talented as well. And then obviously you got the new guy in Bethany. So it's going to be an interesting year. Hunter Tate in motion. Handoff will go up the middle to Andrew Toms. Number Unable. 32 again. Caden Pickens on the tackle. It's going to bring up a fourth down here. Should be an interesting call here. We went for the field goal early in the first quarter. Um, Looks like he's keeping the offense on the field right now and going to go for it here on this fourth and short. I'm definitely thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. I think they'll go for yeah. it right here. Yeah. Nothing against Eli, but, I mean, I think they've got a lot of momentum right now. You know you're getting the ball back at the end of the halftime. So yeah, you uh, punch it in right here for a fourth. You, you can punch it in right here, and if not, you, you're probably not going to give up a whole lot. Uh, looks like they're going to drive him off and – but you can still get a first down yeah. here. Hunter Glenn pushes up the middle. They're going to uh, they're call a delay a game. Coach Griffin's not happy about that one. Now we may go change. ahead and kick yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, that brings up a fourth and seven, fourth and six or so now with 39 seconds left. Yeah, it looks like they're going to bring Eli out. Lila Angel will attempt the field goal here. Coach this will be a 29-yard field goal attempt for Eli Angel. Yeah, it was bang-bang there. Um, but obviously the referee didn't feel like we got it off in time, and I'm going to force the field goal here. See if Eli can get this one through for his first field goal of the year. Good snap. Kick is up. And it is good. good as the Cash Bulldogs take a 10 0 lead over the Plainview Indians. We'll be right back in just a minute here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Nobody moves more real estate than Pam and Barry's team. And that's why our clients keep coming back to us. We had some friends that recommended the Pam and Barry team, and they exceeded all of our expectations. Our home sold in three days. It was a wonderful and easy experience. 
and we would love to help you. So follow the signs of Pam and Barry's team at Remax at 248-8800. We we're not bragging, bragging we're just applying for a job. Back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network as the Cash Bulldogs take a 10 to nothing lead with 35 seconds left in the second quarter as we get set for another Wayne's drive in kickoff. Come on, everyone, let's go to Wayne's. Yeah, good drive right there by the offense. Unfortunately, kind of had that uh, timeout play, kind of wiped the touchdown off the board, and then uh, had the uh, Quote, unquote, delay a game, which forced a field goal, but good to see Eli Angel get one through the uprights for his first field goal of the season. At the end of the day, you're still up 10 nothing against a very good football team, so can't complain. Probably not the cleanest no. of uh, first halves. but uh, and, they, and they will get the ball to get the, yeah. start the second half. Eli Angel kicks it off. It kicks a low on drive. Again, it's going to go in the end. Yep. Another touchback for Eli Angel. Now a flag on the play. Here we go. Um See what now this is. on that on that play too, we did not see uh, Morgan Pearson back there. So what's the flag? Delay of game. Delay of game. And what? Let's see. They said delay of game on that's on cash. Was it after? So to is it a dead ball after the kickoff, or is it before the kickoff? I have no idea. Looks like they are going to kick this off again. I mean, that's insane. Yeah, Coach Griffin is going to have a talking to right here with the, with Mr. White Hat. As they march it backwards, it'll be now from the 35. You don't see a lot of delayed games on kickoffs. It's, that doesn't happen very often. No, because I mean they blow it. They blow it in. That's Coach, yeah, Coach Griffin is having a talk with the officials here, trying to figure out what's happening. Yeah, no, he was not happy after that last drive, obviously, right? Uh, with some of the calls. And obviously right now I've been involved in the game of football for long time. a very long time. I'm 38 and probably been involved in the game of football for 33 of those 38. And that may be the first time I've ever seen delay a game on the kickoff. What did five-year-old Vinny look like out on the football field? Oh, he was a beast. <laughs> An absolute man child. So I was Caden Pickens on defense okay. and Hunter Tate on offense. <laughs> yeah, I started playing tackle football when I was five. It's hard to picture that in my mind, <laughs> seeing how you are now. I mean, five year old Benny running around out there. Yeah, with all his wristbands, you know, Vinny looks at it, you know, you, he, Vinny adopts the idea of you look nice, you play nice, oh, yeah. you play well, you know. Yeah. So. Deion Sanders, <laughs> you look good, you play good. You do the high step with the hand on the yeah, end. Yeah, absolutely. Step. We get set to kick this off again, 35 seconds. Another Wayne's driving kickoff. Come on, everyone. Let's go to Wayne's. As Eli Angel tees this one up from the 35 with 35 seconds left in the There's first half. 23 seconds left on the play clock. <laughs> Low liner. Picked up. Oh, no, Hope not so. yet. Bobbled down there. Oh, oh and he's going to sit down on at the three-yard line. He gets up and runs, but you don't do that in high school or college. You are down at the spot. So, at the end of the day, it actually benefited us a little. Uh, they would have got the ball at the 20. Now they get the ball at the three. Sure, maybe, uh, you know, maybe you put a little pressure on them. You probably just play safe here going I, into the half. Yeah, maybe, maybe they make a mistake here and something can happen. Looks like neither team has any timeouts left, so I would not be shocked if they just take a knee and take this one on in. Maybe uh -huh. a quarterback sneak just to kind of – just to kind of make sure, since you're so backed up, um, do not see Morgan Pearson out there. Um, looks like Winchester's coming in to play quarterback. Hopefully he gets to play in the second half because you hate to see anybody yeah, out that, with an injury. That's unfortunate for the playing beginning. Yeah. They're already, you know, quarterback down. Already, yeah, so now you're – No, they're going to run it out of there. Oh, safety. That might be a safety. That is a safety. Oh, yeah. Let's see here with the rest. Make sure they don't give me forward progress. And it is a safety for wow. the Cash Bulldogs. So that kickoff did <laughs> pay off for the Cash Bulldogs. As the Cash Bulldogs now take a 12 to nothing lead here. 
with 24 seconds left in the first half. Great job of the defensive line there to get a bunch of push and um, comes up with an extra two points as we get ready to go in there for halftime. That means they'll have to free kick from the 20. Pearson is walking over there on the sidelines. He's got his helmet in his hand uh, with the coach, and so I think he looks like he's probably okay. That's good news for the Plainview Indians and for him. Yeah, so you've got you got 12 seconds left, 24. Uh, I mean, 12 nothing, 24 seconds left. No timeouts, though, so maybe if you can get a big return, you uh, maybe take a shot or two down to uh, to the end zone, but uh, if not, you're you're okay with going in twelve nothing. Probably want a little bigger of a lead, but there's a strong possibility you could be a lot closer of a game because we kind of got away with one there, as uh, Caden Pickens was about to score a touchdown and drop the ball right there before to force the touchback. So, Cass yes, Bulldogs will have Braden Castro and Jordan <clears throat> Harper deep along with. Reed Line and Hunter Tay as they actually move up a little bit here. Yeah, because they're going to have to kick off from the 20. Right. Doesn't happen that often in high school. You don't get a lot of safeties, and so coaches have to coach them up during the game just like they do in practices and say, hey, guys, move up about 10, 15 yards. Right. And, uh, Cash should get good field position here if they can get a good uh, We might clean. try one of our little – Oh, yeah, some of our little gadget kickoff Yeah, kind of kind of depending mm -hmm. on how they kick it. Uh, we haven't seen Plainview kick off yet tonight, um, so I don't know how their kicker kicks. But if it's back there to Braden Castro, Reed Lion right here, right at the Bulldog, could uh, could come up with a little something funky there. Got, Braden, got a ton of speed back here with Hunter Tate, Braden Castro, and George Harper. So let's see what we can come up with here. They'll tee it up from the 20-yard line. Always awesome to see a kicker with a neck roll. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that cowboy collar <laughs> neck roll. Usually that guy's like, I'm playing linebacker. I don't know why I'm out here kicking the ball. But he is. I mean, those guys are multi-talented too. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and he's going to tell it too. Yeah. So he waits for the go-ahead, and the ball falls off the tee for the second time uh, in a row. Is that number one? I don't see a number one on their yeah. roster. Yeah, I can't really see the number from my angle. I think that is a number one. We don't not we do not have a number one on the roster. We apologize for that. So he kicks it. It'll be a straight low kick, and just like you said, Reed Lyon will come up with it. Just ah. going to fall on to 42. Not a clean return there, but the Bulldogs will have the ball there with 22 minute or 22 seconds left in um, the second quarter. Might try and just get the ball on the outside to Hunter Tate and see if he can get a big chunk yardage play, and then if he can, maybe see if. Uh, Hunter Glenn could get it to the end zone to one of our many basketball players out there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we do have some guys that are uh, definitely capable of going up and getting a jump ball with uh, 22 seconds left. Yeah, the first play here is going to tell uh, everything of this you know, last 22 seconds right. what we can do as we have Tino Daniels off to the right side. They're going to split him out right. So uh, Hunter Glenn, um, yeah, they're going to try something here. It's a fake. They try to fake it, and Hunter Tate is open, but there's three guys all over him oh. and broken up. Actually, not a not bad, a bad pass. throw. No, yeah. not at all. That's Dropped it in that, between three Plainview players. Yeah, that's one that Hunter Tate probably, if looks at the film, would say, uh, wish I would have came up with that one. I'll bring up a second down 10 with 16 seconds left in the first half. Cats Bulldogs with a 12 nothing lead. Kynel Daniel. Touchdown run early, and then Eli Angel field goal, and then we have a safety by the catch defense that brings us up to 12 to nothing. I know Daniels is in the backfield behind. Hunter Hunter Glenn. Pistol. Yeah. Um, uh, Jalen Nido was open. Hunter Glenn threw it a little bit out to the side, a little wide there. 13 seconds. That's third down now. Yeah, it looked like Jalen was running a hitch, and Hunter thought maybe he was running an out. And uh, Cousins didn't get on the same page there. Probably talk about that one at Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> now they've got a good Thanksgiving football game, you know. Yeah, that, absolutely. Right? Yeah. Hunter Glenn looks to the sideline to get the call. Actually, you want to be playing at Thanksgiving. Yeah, that that's right. Yeah, that yeah that's true. Yeah. Rocking and rolling. Maybe you know, practicing or playing on Thanksgiving. It's kind of damn gets the ball out to the right. Got a lot of room and some blockers. Got it. 
And he is able to get down <laughs> to the 33. I love Vinny's excitement here. Seven <laughs> seconds left in the first half. So they're going to have a shot yeah. here. That's exactly what you wanted. Yeah, you kind of get there. I think uh, from this from this, from this, this spot in the field, I think Hunter can get it to the end zone. So look for him to go deep to either Hunter Tate or, or Reed Lyon here. Depends, too. You may uh, – May get a quick out to Jalen and then see if Eli can pump one through from about 35, 40 yards out. I know Daniels is behind Hunter see? Glenn. Look, a quick hitch right here. Yep. That's exactly what's happening. Get out of bounds. No. Yeah, he's going to try to do everything. Yeah. Can, that's, gonna, that's how we're going to end the first half. Clock, like. Well, if they can clock it. We've got two seconds left. They've got to get up there really, really quick. Hunter's got to get behind the center. I think they can clock it and have one second Two left. Two seconds. They might have another shot here. They're going to say delay. They just ran the clock after we. So, hey, yeah. Yeah, it's. Hunter's got to do a better job there of making sure that the play is blown for play, but, I mean, the referees have got to do a better job communicating there as well. Make sure that that's how this first half. The playing view players are running off the field and make sure the officials are – make sure this is – Plain view sure says it's over. Um, they're, 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 we're not coming back. <laughs> I don't blame them either. Yeah, they're out there. So you're not supposed to spike it. You're not supposed to snap it, obviously, prior to Tell them calling the play. Sure. Uh, the the – the sticks were not set up at that point, but usually that. Do you think they would bring that back the and middle, let him go for that again? Then, well, right? the middle the middle judge usually is over the football. The middle judge is usually over the football and then runs out of the way that it says it's okay. So when he ran out of the way, yeah, bad job of communicating by the referees there. Cash Bulldog faithful, not happy. Uh, the coaching staff not happy as well, but that's how we'll end the first half. Cash Bulldogs lead the Plain of Indians 12 0 here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. We'll be right back in just a minute with the Phillips Music Halftime Show. Bridges and Buckner Dentistry at 1802 Northwest 52nd Street has over 32 years of combined experience. They serve Southwest Oklahoma for implant placement and final restorations using guided surgery and CEREC technology. This enables them to do same day crowns in the office. Call to set up your appointment today or visit them online at bridgesandbucknerdentistry.com. Want to take the stress out of your next remodel or building project? Comanche Home Center can deliver all the lumber, supplies, and tools right to you. When you're done, they'll pick up anything you don't use and give you credit towards your next project. Give Comanche Home Center a call today for a free estimate. Here at Carpet One, we have a great selection of carpet, hardwood, vinyl, tile, laminate, and area rugs. With all this, you're sure to find exactly what you want for your home. Come browse our exclusive selection or give Carpet One at Comanche Home Center a call today for a free estimate. Back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network now for your Phillips Music Halftime Show. Phillips Music, toot your own horn with Phillips Music, 107 Southwest Sheridan Road, 357, 11-18.
representative 2020 2021 Cash High School varsity cheerleaders. Ladies and gentlemen, now entering the field is our very own Pride of Cash marching band. Pride of Cash band is in the direction of Mr. Derek Griner and Mr. Rob Miller. Pride of Cash band is led by senior drum majors Rosalind Reese and Morgan Chisholm. Pride of Cash drumline is led by drumline captains Alexis Ullian and Sean Williams. Ride of Cash Color Guard is directed by Tracy Threes and assisted by guard captains Fallon Griffith and Morgan Sherwood. Tonight's halftime show is titled Rockstar, featuring Bully by Shinedown. Drum majors, is your band ready? Bulldog fans, let's cheer on your pride of cash, marching band! Pride of Cash Band has maintained a long-standing tradition of musicianship going back decades. We would like to take a moment to honor that heritage by introducing and welcoming the following Cash Band alum. From 1979, trombone player David Adams. 
From 1981, trumpet drumline, Wesley Blanton. From 1981, tenor sax, Jerry Randall. From 1981, clarinet, Susan Taylor. From 1984, trombone, Michael Ritchie. From 1985, flute color guard, Shannon Ritchie. From 1986, saxophone, Joan Gableman. From 1988, alto sax, color guard, Tracy Freeze. From 1994, bass clarinet, Jennifer Kerr. From 1996, clarinet drum major, Jennifer Chisholm. From 1999, clarinet, Leslie Barfield. 1999, clarinet, color guard, Kendra Clark. 2019, color guard, Jillian Morales. 2020, piccolo, Sarah Cottingham. 2020, trumpet, Nathan Logan. 2020, drumline, Jared Lowry. Welcome back, Bulldogs! marks a special year in the history of Bulldog football. This is the 50th year that football has been played at Cash High School. Each week, each home game, we will honor a decade of past coaches and players. Tonight, the young men and not so old men that started it all, the 1970s alumni group. First, we will recognize you individually, and then I will read a letter from Coach Griffin. Kevin Papachico. Rodney, Rodney Edmondson. David Adams. Larry Alexander. Alvin Cargill. Gary Sigler, Coach Bill Hunt, Bill Wormy, Bobby Dodd, Randy Taylor, and Joe Bill Runyon. And now from Coach Griffin. To the Bulldogs of the 1970s, to those of you that had the vision to start the sport of football at Cash Public Schools, we thank you. Because of you, 50 years of Bulldog football has taken place each fall in our community to teach young men life lessons they can't learn anywhere else. Because of you, for 50 years, the community has had their own team to root for each Friday night. Also, because of you, for 50 years, many young men in our community have been blessed to live their dreams under the Friday night lights. No one can say this louder than me because I am living my dreams right here each Friday night. To those of you who coached as a Bulldog, we want to thank you for being a role model, parent, counselor, friend, and an influence to the many young men of our community. To those of you who don the mighty red and white colors of the Bulldogs, we thank you for paving the way for generations to come. We thank you for the memories, heritage, and tradition of Bulldog football. Each Friday night, we do our best to represent the colors for those who came before us. Tonight, 
We honor each of you. We have a future because of our past. It is a great day to be a Bulldog. Once a Bulldog, always a Bulldog. Sincerely, Coach Sam Griffin and the Bulldog Pack. Welcome back. 1970s Cash Bulldog. You are watching the Phillips Music Halftime Show, Toot Your Own Horn with Phillips Music. We've just been able to, to see. They just said the so Cash Bulldog football has been around for 50 right. years now, and so um, they're going to honor, I guess, every home game. They're going to honor a decade of players, and so yeah. the players from the 70s that we're able to uh, come here, there's 10 of these. They call them young guys and not so young guys <laughs> that started the Cash Bulldog program way back in the 70s, and they were they are the, basically you know, the foundation which Cash Bulldog football has been built on always good to be able to honor uh, players uh, like that, people that have meant so much to this town and to the program here in Cash. And so I guess every home game now we'll yep. be seeing somebody, um, a team or a team, you know, players from that decade, not just specific teams, but players from the decade. And we start with the 70s tonight. So Cash Bulldogs, we lead this one 12 to, no 12 to nothing. Got about six minutes left before uh, halftime. What are the keys to the second half? Uh, to kind of clean up some of the mistakes. I mean, it wasn't. Uh, I mean, obviously we we got a twelve nothing lead, so that's the big thing. So we're we're happy with that. But it wasn't the cleanest played first half. Had some uh, penalties there um, that that are kind of uncharacteristic. Hunter Tate put the ball on the ground a couple of different times. Uh, defense was allowing some big gash runs against them. So kind of cleaning some of that stuff up. Want to make sure. To, uh, for the players' state, for the players' sake, I mean, obviously with an off week next week, want to make sure that they finish this thing out strong. Because if not, that's going to leave a bad taste in Coach Griffin's mouth, and make, uh, might make next week a little bit uh, harder than your normal off week. So, kind of want to clean some of those things up because it's, it, like I said, not exactly the smoothest and and nicest played half. Kind of a little sloppy there, but uh, still got a whole half of football left. And at the end of the day, you're up 12 nothing, so can't really uh, complain about that. Uh, we'll get the ball right here. So look for them to keep the ball on the ground again. Kind of towards the end of that sec, in, towards the end of that first half, we were able to kind of impose our will a little. So look forward to them kind of sticking to that run game uh, and making sure we get out of here with a victory. It'll be interesting to see if number ten Pearson does yeah. come back out uh, to play quarterback. And again, I saw him walk around. I think he's okay, but. With a hit like that, sometimes you're careful with the guy. Again, this this game, you're always careful with the players anyway, but this game is not a district game, and so right. it's not even in your class. And so, No, I would, I would assume they have a week off next week too, so you might want to hold him out the second half just so that way, uh, especially if it's a broken collarbone for for Taylor there. or, or uh, Yeah, for Taylor, uh, he's going to have to be a big part of your offense for the rest of the year. So maybe a, it may be a situation too where I mean, the, the, a head injury issue because, I mean, obviously it was a tough hit. I don't know if his head hit the – ground after the play or whatnot so may want to hold him out but we'll see kind of early in the in the second half what they decide to do there uh obviously if he's out it kind of makes them even even much more one-dimensional as far as probably keeping the ball on the ground but uh but uh we'll see kind of where he stands for the rest of the game well, look at some scores from around the state uh by in leads john marshall 24 to 22 that's at halftime again john marshall it's one of those teams that has moved up in class from 3A to 4A and uh, has been pretty good so far. They are up to number five in the latest polls. Uh, something I want to bring up, again, I, I'm from Ada, but I was reading the paper yesterday, and uh, we, we've we been talking about this kind of on, off the, on and off the air just a little bit, but with the COVID stuff, Ada, they had a bout of the COVID, and so they actually had to cancel this week's game okay. and their next week's game. So they're, it's going to at least and maybe more, but two weeks for sure that they had to cancel. I think they're just going to – go ahead and eat those games. And uh, so uh, that's something to be watching. As we go out throughout, I mean, you know, all these schools, they're really trying to be careful with how they handle this. And, uh, you know, with the locker rooms and things like that, you get an outbreak and it can go from one player to the next pretty quickly. Right. And so uh, Ada is one of those teams who, you know, they moved down from 5A to 4A. And so they're not going to be playing for a, a couple of weeks. But looking at some other scores around uh, the state to come. So we saw them last year here yep. in the first round of the playoffs. They lead Lone Grove 7-6. to six. At halftime, Hilldale leads Dakota twenty to zero. Wagner uh, down to Tahlequah three to nothing. That is the start of the third yeah. quarter. Tuttle and Newcastle in the battle. You can watch the Newcastle Racers here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. We'll see them here in a, in a couple of weeks. We have an off week, and then Bethany. Then I think we travel to Newcastle. Tuttle number two in the state leads Newcastle. The Racers fourteen to seven and a half. Elk City with an offensive explosion. 
54 points at halftime wow. against Guyman for the Elks. Fort Gibson leads Catoosa 24 to 0. Southeast up over Classen. Uh, SAS uh, 20 to 18 Hilldale again. We already talked about that score. Poto of 33 to 3 over Alma. That score is at halftime. Blanchard leads Elgin. A uh, tough start for Elgin this year. Another team on our Oklahoma Sports Network that you can catch down down to down to Blanchard 34 to 7 at the half. Woodward and Bethany. Bethany who we'll see after our off yeah. new to to Class 4A1 from moving over from 4A2. Kind of had a rough start to the year as well for them. They're only up 14-13. Uh, at Woodward uh, at, at halftime against Woodward, Weatherford leads El Reno, which we've talked about already, 20 to nothing at halftime. El Reno obviously struggling uh, without Plumley at quarterback. Collinsville and Sky took two two really good teams in the state, 28 to seven. Collinsville leads that at the half. Heritage Hall, so Clinton taking on the, the Heritage Hall team. Heritage Hall team, another team very rich in tradition. <laughs> they'll play up in class. They'll play down in class. That game is knotted up at 7 at the half. Perkins try on. They're down to Cushing, 14-7 to seven at the half. Chandler leads Bristow, 21-14. to 14. Stillwell leads Gentry, 20-0. to zero. And that's your scores from around the state in Class 4A. We're going to take a break. We'll be back here in just about one minute with the second half kickoff here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. We use them every day, working, playing, and usually taking them for granted. If your feet hurt, see the professionals at Southwest Foot and Ankle Clinic. They've been serving Southwest Oklahoma for the past 36 years, providing the highest quality care and combining the latest technology with old-fashioned Oklahoma compassion. With three locations to serve you, Lawton, Duncan, and Altus. Call today or visit us online at swokfoot.com. 4D Landscaping and Irrigation has been providing top-rated professional landscape and irrigation services for the past 25 years. They take your vision for that perfect landscaping project for your home, new construction, or business and make it a reality with their easy financing options. You'll want to make sure to ask them about their seasonal services too. 4D Landscaping and Irrigation. Call 510-9983. Back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network, as we're getting set to kick off the second half here in Cash, Oklahoma, as the Cash Bulldogs lead this one on the Oklahoma Sports Network, 12 to nothing over the Plainview Indians. They're going to give the guys about two more minutes to warm up here. Obviously, yep. the first half, just like Vinny said, there was a uh, really it was a pretty ugly first half. Now we just score in several different ways. We had a <laughs> had a touchdown, a field goal, and a safety. You don't, you don't get to do that very often. If you, <laughs> If you had that on your little square thing, you know, yeah, people do no. for like Super Bowls, and you probably two, two two nothing is not. Uh, yeah, that's not, not a big not a big uh, winner there on the on the scores. And my guess is that's probably what Griffin is, you know, talking about the, to the players. And he's like, "Hey guys, we got an off week next week. We need to clean some things up this yeah. half. I mean, you definitely want to use your off week. You know, like you said with Zach Johnson, that you want to get him healthy again, so that off week is going to be good for him and other players. But you do you don't want to go into your off week having played. Of course, you always get the win. You're going to take a win no matter what you get, but uh, no matter how it looks. But you want it to look good. You don't want it to be ugly. Yeah, no, you don't want it to be ugly. I mean, we're lucky to have the 12 nothing lead because, I mean, obviously they were about to score there and make it 12-7, uh, to make it 7 nothing. but uh, Caden Pickens kind of fumbled the ball out of the end zone there, kind of an unforced error that uh, led to a touchback because uh, we could have been down 7 nothing. That would have really 
uh, inflamed Coach Griffin. But you got to hold, you got to, got to, got to give credit to the defense. I mean, we're now six quarters in to not allowing a, a score, so. Uh, defense is really stepping up and kind of tighten things up a little towards the end of the second half on some of those long runs and things. So that's one thing I'm sure that Taylor Thompson has, uh, Tanner Thompson has worked on with with his defense, kind of shoring up that. Obviously, if if um, Pearson doesn't play in the second half, you're not going to have that bracket situation, so you'll be more 11-on-11 11 because 11, what we're kind of doing is bracketing him and double-teaming him, so kind of makes it a kind of a 10-on-9 game for the defense. It makes it a little bit more difficult for them to, to stop some of those plays. So look, uh, look forward to, on the offensive side of things, probably running the ball. We did a good job there kind of leaning on the, the defensive line, using our size to our advantage, and as this game continues to move forward, we'll continue to wear on them. That's one thing that we've always been in the two years that I've been here with the Cash Bulldogs as a second-half team. Yeah, um, Coach Griffin prides a lot of that on his weight program. Um, he says that, that 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 that's where a lot of that comes from. Uh, they focus on that and work on that. So look forward to that coming uh, coming in fruition here in the second half. We want to thank our third quarter sponsor. We'll also make them our fourth quarter sponsor. That is McCracken Portable Toilets. We are number one at going number two. We get set here for the Wayne's Drive-In kickoff. Come on, everyone. Let's go to Wayne's. Wayne's. Sounds pretty good. I don't eat before the game. Vinny is a he's a I'm candy a snacker. snacker over here. He's got all kinds of things. <laughs> I'm a snacker throughout the games, ladies and gentlemen. So if you ever hear that chewing, I can pretty much assure you that's me. <laughs> Braden Castro's back deep. Of course, coaches love his speed back there. It's gonna be a short kick that bounces. Gotta go get it. Yeah, and yeah, we do get the ball there at the 32-yard line. That's number 11, Carlos Harbin. Yeah, that's a live ball there, so got to go make sure you get on that ball and make sure it's a secure possession. We had that happen against El Reno. We kind of fumbled that second-half kickoff and led to an easy score for El Reno. Let's see the Cash Bulldogs, they come back out here. Hunter Glenn leading the team back out onto the field of the offense. Skeeter, DJ Skeeter over there. DJ Skeeter <laughs> is just kicking it tonight. He is uh, he's bringing it tonight, man. He is uh, eclectic. <laughs> back to our time. Hunter Tate goes in motion. Hanoff will be to Kynell Daniels. And, again, he gained about three or four on the play. And after the fumble last week, yep, you know, he is back to he's his. back to the 2019 two hands on the ball, Kynell. He is um, going to be running in the open at some point. And he's still going to have two, <laughs> two hands on the ball, whether it's somebody 40 yards within, within him or not. You know, so, yeah, he, after that fumble, obviously he said, i got to get back to what I was doing. And yeah. He, that's wise. There's nothing wrong with doing that. And so he gained a few yards on the play, bringing up a second and seven. Cash leads this one early in the third quarter, 12-0 to zero over the Plainview Indians. The visitors from Class 3A. As Reed Line and Hunter Tate go into the motion to the left. Nobody out to I the I think right. they're going to have to call a timeout here. Cash Bulldogs are going to call a timeout. Some cute fusion there. We'll take yeah. it with them here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Becker Raybon Funeral Home has been serving the funeral needs of Southwest Oklahoma since 1940 and is owned by the Raybon family. We believe family ownership makes a great difference in the care and service your family receives. Their staff is eager to find ways to assist you. Whether it's with live streaming or benefit assistance, we can help. When it comes to measuring personal levels of service, there are other funeral homes, and then there is ours. Becker Raybon Funeral Home, 1502 Fort Sill Boulevard. All right. And we're back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. 11 18 left to go in the third quarter. Second and seven for the Cash Bulldogs with a 12 0 lead. Hunter Glenn on their center. Kyle Daniels behind him goes in motion out to the right. Hunter Glenn looking his way, but Jalen Knight is wide open down the middle. Woo! Secures the catch all the way in. <laughs> yeah. Lowered his lower head there. Hand, lowered that shoulder all the way in the Indian territory down to the 45 for a catch bulldog first down. Yeah, Jalen's been a good good find for us on offense, kind of in that tight end slash receivers type spot. And uh, there's a lot of a lot of camaraderie and a lot of uh, uh, connection there between the two cousins, obviously. And uh, great pick up there on second down. Enough to George Harper, Harper on the right side. Got a lot of blockers. 
Nice run. It's going to be really close to the first down. May even have it. Yeah, good to see him getting the ball in his hand. Kind of, You had a great run there in the first quarter, first half, and uh, was uh, kind of came up a little gimpy, so it's good to see him back out on the field on the big run there. Got an injured bulldog down there. We have a player down. We will take a timeout here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. At Bill Miller and Noble Heating and Air Conditioning, we take pride in our quality air conditioner and heater repair and replacement services, as well as providing the highest customer satisfaction. Bill Miller and Noble Heating and Air Conditioning has been serving Lawton and the surrounding area for over 25 years. We have the knowledge, equipment, and trained technicians to take care of all your heating and cooling needs. Give us a call. Bill Miller and Noble Heating and Air, 355-1811. Wayne's Drive-In in in Lawton, a tradition since 1950, with two great locations at number 7 Northwest Sheridan Road and Wayne's 2 at 6810 Northwest Cash Road, serving the same old-fashioned hamburgers you know and love and grew up with. Maybe it's Wayne's famous steak fingers, or maybe you're in the mood for a sissy cheeseburger, chicken sandwich, salad, pizza, or just an order of onion rings. And don't forget Wayne's famous sweet tea or cherry limeade. Cruise on in before or after the game. Wayne's, number 7 Northwest Sheridan Road and 6810 Northwest Cash Road. Let's go to Wayne's! Time to start cracking it, cooking it, buttering it, grilling it, baking it, brewing it. McDonald's fires up the griddle every morning so you can start digging in and enjoying it. And saving with the mix and match deal. Choose from sausage McMuffin with egg, bacon egg and cheese biscuit, or bacon egg and cheese McGriddles. Two for just $4. Add any size soft drink for just a buck. Make your morning routine a little better. Back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network, the injured player was Jalen Knight, who was able to walk off the field. The good news there for the Cats Bulldogs. As Hunter Glenn brings the offense back out on the field with a 12 to nothing lead, 10:59 left in the third quarter. Hunter Tate at the bottom of your screen will go in motion. Handoff is going to be up the middle of Kyle Daniels, a gain of about three on the play. Yeah, a short little yard play there, kind of a trap up the middle. Offensive line got a decent push off the ball and three yards in a cloud of dust right there. No dust in the turf field, obviously. <laughs> black rubber, yeah, whatever black that rubber stuff pellets, is down there, yeah. Tire pieces. Kendall, how you doing? We uh, see that you're watching the game in New Mexico, so let's go Bulldogs. We, we second that. Yeah, we appreciate you watching in New Mexico. We actually talked about New Mexico earlier off the air. We did. That's kind of Daniels gets the handoff and uh, – and about another three yards on the play. One day we're gonna gonna leave the audio on for our in between commercial breaks and things like that, and let you guys listen to all the fun stuff that happens up here. <laughs> <laughs> well, could be a reality you know, show, maybe. It gets interesting. <laughs> Hunter Glenn. Uh, has to get whatever he can there yeah. on the third and four. It's going to be really it's close. Gonna, yeah, very close. You don't see a lot of quarterback sneaks for four yards. but No, uh, Coach Griffin likes that. He kind of looks and sees where, where the defense is lined up. And if there's a gap there, he just kind of points at Hunter, and Hunter follows his uh, fo- follows their Alden Connerman there and, yeah, and there will be kind of road, road grades the way and, and picks up some big yarders there. Scored several touchdowns like that early in the year, so. Hopefully we pick up the first down right here. Good to see Jalen got his helmet back on and kind of in that huddle. I don't know if he's going to come back in yet, but he's good to like see he him. wants to. Yeah, <laughs> good to see him up yeah. and have that helmet back on. And Absolutely. Can't see it from here. Looks like he like got it. First down. Another yeah. Cash Bulldog first down. 
yeah, just kind of followed all, all the mm -hmm. time in there. And great job by, by him to push that nose tackle back and get the big first down. Connerman's shout out. Policy holders of mine. <laughs> That, that's one of those. This is going to be me against you on this yeah. play. And, uh, yeah, those quarterback sneaks. I mean, it's all it's all or nothing for the offensive line. Kynell on a speed sweep here. Yeah, Kynell gets out to the edge, gets down to about the 16-yard line. Yeah, not often we use him on those speed sweeps. He's kind of our inside guy. But uh, good to see him getting, on, getting the ball on the outside and getting some big positive yards on first down. Talk about it all the time, and we'll, we'll talk about it until – I'm forced to be off the air. The uh, <laughs> second <laughs> second and short is where you want to be because it leaves the whole offense open. Drops back to pass. There is a flag in the backfield. This is likely coming back as Tino Daniels' the reception down to the 10-yard line. Likely coming back right there, but great job by Hunter Glenn. I mean, we haven't really talked much about him this year. I mean, he's kind of that steady guy that doesn't really – lose games for you kind of that game manager type but he's gotten so much better over the last couple of years and that right there was just a testament of how much better he is how much of a better understanding of the offense he has he was obviously looking to go to read line there on the on the up on the on the far side of the field on a slant it was covered pretty good he went down to his check down uh and uh just gave with the deep Gave what the deep did what the defense gave him and and uh, was able to uh, pick up some positive yards there, but unfortunately it was a holding on it and comes back. Uh, bring up a second and very long here. We just talked about how you want to stay in second and shorts, so and this is exactly what you don't want to be in second down. George Harper in motion, screen pass out to Hunter Tate, who's able to. Get back inside the original. Uh, that right there is exactly how you want to throw those kind of uh, bubble screens there. He threw it right on Hunter's front shoulder, so he was able to catch the ball moving forward, make that one-man miss, and pick up a big yard. I mean, that was a 12-yard play right there when it was a throw of, what, negative yards. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, that's uh, that, that's what you want to do in an offense like this, especially people like Hunter Tate and, and those guys on the outside. You want to get the ball to your playmakers in space and let them make some plays. Hunter Glenn goes up under center. Harper in motion. Drops back to pass. Looking for Nido, and that's going to be picked, uh, picked off. off. He's got a lot of room, but he's going to be chased out of bounds. Yeah, that one right there kind of forced. Uh, we talked about <laughs> he, was, he was making good reads and things like that right there. Kind of uh, – was going for Ethan Hood there across the middle on a kind of a seam play, and safety read it well, and Hunter didn't see that safety. Safety was able to step in front of that for a big pickoff there and a little momentum play there for the Plainview Indians. Only the second turnover forced. Uh, well, coming into this game, they only had one previous to this game Plainview did, so uh, they haven't done that a lot this season. They were able to get the pass there as both times now team has been driving and, you know, getting close to the red zone and, uh, turn the ball over, so that could be key down here. 12 to nothing, 8.30 left in the third quarter as the quarterback is Winchester, and he hands the ball off on the outside. Hunter Tate did a nice job of making him cut that back in. Yeah, great job of him to kind of protect that outside shoulder, make him cut up. When he, was, when he cut up, the rest of the gang was there to bring him down for short yardage play. Pearson's not in the game right now, but he is over there with his helmet on, kind of close to the sticks, kind of stretching and doing some things. So we may see him. We'll see as the game moves forward. Hunter Young on the carry of the gain of two for the Indians as Winchester gets the play call, bringing it back into the huddle. Can play you not in any hurry tonight. The play clock down to 10 right now with – Eight minutes left in the third quarter. No, they're very deliberate on offense. A lot of teams these days kind of run that spread offense. And whoa, Mr. Patty Aker. As your OSM player of the week, Jeffrey Patty Aker with the stop in the backfield. Great job of using his hands there. Swim move over top of the over top of that offensive lineman was back there before uh, before that running back could get anything moving. And a big, big play there to force a third and as, Very long. As you see Jeffrey Patty Aker there, the image of OSM Player of the Week on your screen. Congratulations to him with a big play. I'll bring up a third and 14. The Plainview Indians. He's got the Ezekiel Elliott look yeah. going there. Yeah. yeah. Winchester again. Jalen is back there. Again, and oh, getting in the face of the – Hunter Tate did a nice yeah, job. Yeah, great job by him right there. Bring up a fourth down and long. 
claimed he was going to be forced to punt the ball. Good to see Jalen back out there on the defensive end. Kind of rolled to his side and was able to get his big paw up there and make it difficult for the quarterback to get the ball out. And great job by Hunter Tate to be right on that receiver and block it down. So it looks like they're going to bring up a punt here. A great defensive series. Nobody by the back for us. I think we're going to kind of play it safe and just let them kick it out of there. Kicks Not a end bad over bump. end. Going to get a oh. great bounce. Yeah. Going to land and stop at about the 28-yard line. Well, the catch Bulldogs will take over on offense. With 6.55 left in the third quarter, 12-0 the lead now over the Plainview Indians. The turnover and the catch defense able to bail out the offense. Yeah, yeah. They, good job of sudden change right there. Kind of forced that three and out and uh, see if the offense can get rolling again. Catch us on OKSportsNet.com. Don't know where you're watching us from tonight, but we thank you for joining us. You might be in New Mexico. You might be in Plain. Right. You, you might be in Cash at Home. You Covington, might be in Louisiana. You might be in Louisiana. You could be anywhere watching us tonight. We appreciate you joining us. If you're watching us on OKSportsNet.com, you can always catch us on the Roku, on the OSN app. You can catch us on the Amazon Fire Stick. You can catch us on Android. You can catch us on Apple. I know my wife and kids went back to Ada tonight. My wife said she downloaded the uh, OSN app so they could watch it tonight on the, when they got to Ada. It's kind of Daniels gets the carry. Not much doing there. Gained about two or three. Using Kynel a little bit more in this half on that speed sweep. and Gained about five actually on the Interesting play. right here. There's a flag. Had it been something said. Hunter Glenn is pointing in the direction of Plainview. We'll get the call down from the field here. It's a dead ball personal. Yeah, must have, must have said one of the magic words because it was kind of there was no shoving, pushing, nothing, and uh, everybody was kind of walking away from each other. So must have said some one of those magic words that the referee yeah, there's a, there's a caught. Few, there's a few of those words that will cost you 15 yards. Oh yeah. No doubt playing. You're getting a little bit frustrated here early in this game. Well, it's still in third quarters. Hunter Glenn goes up under center. Hunter Tate in motion from the bottom of the screen to the top. Eli Angel again getting some carries in this game like he did last week. Gain of about three on the play for the, the kicker slash running back. Yeah, slash linebacker. Slash last, linebacker. Last week he uh, definitely filled the uh, stat sheet up. Uh, if you're a statistician, you're going, wait, 38's doing what now? Because yeah, yeah. Uh, he had uh, kickoffs and – and tackles and rushes and all kinds of good stuff. So, yeah, I think he recovered a fumble maybe. Hunter Tate in motion. Handoff will be. It's a pass fake. right there. He's looking down the field. And oh, good catch. Oh, completed to number 33. That's Brady Wise. Great job by Brady Wise right there on the catch. Hunter kind of kept, kept buying some time, buying some time, buying some time, and then was able to squeeze it in there. Great catch by Brady Wise with the defender kind of wrapped around his back. Very patient throw. Hunter Glenn waiting for that to open up. Catch Bulldogs have another first down. Driving here with 5.50 left in the third quarter. Up 12-0 over Plainview. Hunter Glenn number center. Hunter Tate goes in motion. Handoff is to Hunter Tate. All kinds of room out on the outside. Uh, there is going hold. to be a hole. We saw that jersey. Yeah. Yeah, Hunter hasn't had the game that, uh, that he usually does. Hasn't got as many speed sweeps this week. Um... It's not but always uh, your job to do that. I mean, no. a, lot, a lot of this, you know, we talked about. A the, lot, of, yeah, a lot of you're going to use him a lot of times as a decoy. I mean, uh, defenses are going to going to um, key on him. Obviously, the first two weeks we used him a ton. So playing view, probably just like we did with Pearson, there kind of knew that that's what was coming. So we've kind of done some different things and use him as a decoy tonight. But uh, good to see him get the ball in his hand. But unfortunately, it's coming back with the hold on the outside. Yeah, that will be a hold. Now March. Catch Bulldogs back where they'll do first down all over again. This time from the Plainview 41. Need to get all the way down to about the 22. So first and 19 for Cash. Hunter Glenn goes up under center. So he made a little check there. George Harper in motion. Handoff up the middle. Kyle Daniels. There's that trap play. Nice hole and 
Breaks a couple tackles, still going all the way inside. The 20 down to the 19, 22 yard run for Kynell Daniels. Yeah, kind of a trap play right there. Talked about how we were going to run those a little bit more tonight than we have throughout the first two games because because of the four man front by Plainview and good job right there by Kynell picking that hole and uh, picking up a big yardage play on first down to force another first down. Andrew Tom's into the game. What are we doing here? Again, somewhat of a sloppy game. Not not a yeah. lot of not a lot of rhythm in this game. No, it's kind of one of those two steps forward, one step. Wait, so how are we offside? How does that work? Okay, so yeah, so what they're saying is is uh, somebody lined up. I guess pass the ball. Yeah. He's going to throw. Griffin is not. Well, uh, they wind the clock back. We have a first and 15 now. Hunter Glenn goes back up under center. Jalen Nido to your far side of the screen up top. Hunter Tate in motion. Handoff's going to be to Kyle Daniels, who gets past the tackler on the yeah. edge. Back to the original line of scrimmage, maybe an extra yard or so. Great job by Kynell to kind of avoid that first tackler, avoid the lost yardage play, and get some positive yards there to bring it to a second and ten. Kind of speeding up here a little. Yeah, getting some uh, tempo. Hanging off to Kynell Daniels on the edge. There's a lot of room out there. Hunter Tate again, a couple of blocks. Yeah, Hunter's doing a good job on the outside tonight blocking. Uh, hey, when you're not getting the ball, you got to help your team out in whatever way you can. So those guys block for him on those speed sweeps, so he needs to do the same thing when the when his teammates get the ball. So good job by him there. Going to throw it here. Yeah, they're going to throw it. Nice catch out by number 40. That yeah. is Ethan Hood. Bring another first down. Going to now bring it to first and goal. Good job right there, kind of a high-low route, kind of a smash route, the old Florida Gator play where you got a short, uh, you got a short hitch and you've got a corner route going behind it. The corner slipped back, and he wasn't able to get it to Hunter Tate, so he went to his check down route and hood there and pick up the first down. The old ball coach used to call that play just about every play. Yeah, that was a familiar play. <laughs> Kynell. Ball up the Ooh. middle, Kynell down to about the – one yard line. Looked like he was going to get in there, but uh, good job of the Plainview linebacker stepping up into that hole. And that's Caden Pickens again, number 32. Going to stop him just short. Oh, what are we going to go with here? What do you think? I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be a sneak. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another Cash Bulldog touchdown for Hunter Glenn with a sneak up the middle. It's been a familiar side for Cash Bulldog fans this year. <laughs> Yeah, when we get to that one-yard position, I mean, it's almost night and day. I mean, we're going to do it. Well, his and, his uh, running average has got to be super low. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's averaging, yeah. He's but got six carries for six yards and his six touchdowns. touchdowns. His touchdowns <laughs> for carry is about as good as you can get. <laughs> Cash Bulldogs now take an 18 to nothing lead. 3.47 left in the third quarter over the Plainview Indians. Eli Angel set to kick the extra point. And like you said with the swinging gate, we do have a quarterback – as a holder, that's something to oh, look, look at. Here we yeah, go. Here it is. Hunter Glenn goes up under center. Draw him off sides. And it worked. And now we're going to probably go now you're gonna for two here. It'll be well, half the distance, I guess. Right? Yeah, so they'll be at the one and a half. So they'll line up and probably go for two right here. Kind of make it a. So they bring out the big boys here. Try and make it a 20 to nothing game rather than a 19. Having him act back there, I mean, that's why you do that. Yeah. You have him back there so he's a weapon and you got to make them account for him. Well, and, I mean, he's got good hands. I mean, he's used to handling the ball and things like that. But multiple times this year there have been some not the greatest snaps, and he's done a great job of getting those kind of in there. Yeah, kind of Daniels goes in motion. He will get the two-point conversion for the Cash Bulldogs, who now lead 20-0 to over the Plainview Indians. We'll be right back here in just a minute on the Oklahoma Sports Network. At Bill Miller and Noble Heating and Air Conditioning, we take pride in our quality air conditioner and heater repair and replacement services, as well as providing the highest customer satisfaction. Bill Miller and Noble Heating and Air Conditioning has been serving Lawton and the surrounding area for over 25 years. We have the knowledge, equipment, and trained technicians to take care of all your heating and cooling needs. Give us a call. Bill Miller and Noble Heating and Air. 
Back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network, the Cash Bulldogs now have a 20-0 lead over the Plainview Indians. We get set for another Wayne's drive-in kickoff. Come on, everyone, let's go to Wayne's. To Wayne's. Yeah, we were talking about it a little bit during the break. I mean, yeah, there's not much flow to this game right now. It's kind of, you know, one step forward, two steps back, and yeah. um, so not a, like I said, not an ideal game going into the break, but the. Best part about it right now, we were up 20 to nothing and You're still pitching a shutout. Still pitching a shutout. And, uh, but, but on the offensive side of things, I mean, we probably want to, we got to clear some things up and clear some things up on the defensive side of things as well. Now, Stop some of those gash plays. So I will say on the offensive side of the ball, this half they've looked much better. Cash has yeah. looked much more crisp on offense. Yeah, they have, and they've kind of they've kind of mixed it up a little. We haven't just been ground and pound. Uh, we've kind of let Hunter Glenn uh, get get the ball in the air. Some he's looked good. He's made some some smart decisions. Obviously, probably wants to have that one back. But outside of that, he's he's played a good solid half and good solid year so far. See the Angel kicks the ball down to about the six-yard line. It will be returned. A lot of room. Cuts it out wisely. It's Carlos Harbin again chasing him down, stopping him. Ethan Hood also. Yeah, again, not something that you want to see. Kind of lost the, the lanes there, was able to run it up the middle and then kick it to the outside. When, on, when you're on that kickoff team, you kind of keep your lanes. You don't necessarily go follow the ball. You kind of have a, a lane that you're in. There's those five guys. There's five guys on one side, five guys on the other side of the kicker, and each each person has a lane. But somebody probably got out of their lane, whether they were blocked out of their lane or tried to fold inside to make the tackle. And once it was bounced, the outside had a big yardage return there. So another thing I probably want to clean up uh, during this off week. Number 22, Blue Norman on the return. Number 32, Caden Pickens in the backfield with Winchester at quarterback. Winchester's going to get the snap and hand it off to Pickens, who's met right there immediately. But he's still driving his feet and picks up some yeah. positive yards after being met in the hole there by Brady Wise. He's used to meeting people in the hole like that, so he knows uh, to keep pumping your feet there and was able to get some yardage after, the con after contact there and – Bringing a second and medium there rather than second and long. Gain a three on the play. Winchester having to go back and forth there. They're, um, obviously, again, he's not you know the starting quarterback, and so there's uh, definitely want to make sure they're on the right page with the coach. And yeah. So we've got Caden Pickens again to the left. As he, enough will go to Caden Pickens down the right that's edge. That's got to be a hold. Uh, I guess not. Reed Lyon did a nice job of coming up. He missed the tackle, but he forced uh, Pickens to have to cut that thing out. And yeah, Hunter Tate was kind of right there and uh, looked like there was there was a hold, but they're close. Yeah. So now they're gonna now they're gonna. It's gonna be on. Obviously, our coaches thought there was a hold too, and they're gonna get us with a uh, with an unsportsmanlike, I guess, on the coach. wasn't Coach Griffin because he was back here. I don't think it was Coach Thompson either, but unfortunately it seemed like it was a clear hold, but obviously the referees didn't see the same thing, and they're right there on top of it. So they had a better view than we did and better view than the coach did. And Again, probably said one of those magic words. And it will be, as we have talked about, so it will be a 15-yard penalty. Plainview Indians now again driving and be inside the Cash Bulldog 20-yard line. Need to get a score on the board with 2.38 left in the third quarter to get back in this game. This game is by no means over. Three-score no. game with a quarter left still and two minutes to go in this quarter. Yeah, I mean, it's just one of those no flow to it. I mean, you get – it's just kind of this awkward – Bumbling, yeah. stumbling. Uh, now another they're going to call flag. another one. Calling for, they're calling for being out of the coach's box. But the maybe. box now is to the 10-yard line, right. supposedly. I believe that's what they're doing. We were told in the El Reno. Okay. I'm not sure. Okay. 
I've never heard of an encroachment on the offense. It's the second time they called it tonight. Obviously, it's a it's a it's a penalty. I guess that means you're lining up on. Well, they're telling the coaches. Yeah, they're. We need to know, get yeah. that coach right now. Yeah, that's. Um, we just got one of those guys back there. Usually, it's one of those muscle bound guys that can. Yeah, push the strength back. coach, yeah. right? Yeah. All right, we'll be a first and now. A fifteen from Plainview. Hand off again. Caden Pickens. Great job there by the defense. Hunter Tate kept his outside shoulder free and made Pickens cut up underneath him. And the defense was able to rally and get there for the lost yardage play. Some people are probably like, well, why didn't Hunter try and make that tackle right there? He did his job. He kept with his assignment. His assignment is to make sure that nobody gets to the outside of him. And he, he did a great job there to making him cut up. Obviously, if he cuts inside of that, that's where the guys are coming from. So that's yeah, where yeah, you're going to yeah. get the big hit from. Yeah, when you talk about assignment football, assignment football is always not, it's not always seeing the football tackling. <laughs> right, the guy, yeah. right, no doubt. Yeah, it, it's doing exactly what you're told to do. It's plain view hurries to the line this try, time with Winchester at quarterback. There's going to be a false start, I believe, on the plain view. Team. No, I'm going to time out there. Maybe a time out. We will take that with him here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. <laughs> Wayne's Drive-In in Lawton, a tradition since 1950, with two great locations at number 7 Northwest Sheridan Road and Wayne's 2 at 6810 Northwest Cash Road, serving the same old-fashioned hamburgers you know and love and grew up with. Maybe it's Wayne's Famous Steak Fingers, or maybe you're in the mood for a sissy cheeseburger, chicken sandwich, salad, pizza, or just an order of onion rings. And don't forget Wayne's Famous Sweet Tea or Cherry Limeade. Cruise on in before or after the game. Wayne's, number 7 Northwest Sheridan Road and 6810 Northwest Cash Road. Let's go to Wayne's! We're back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. 20 to nothing to score here in Cash, Oklahoma at Old Rick's Dame, the home mm. Opener in the 2020 season for the Cash Bulldogs. Also, Sweet Caroline. Uh, bum, yeah. bum, bum. Vinny's had too much candy. <laughs> also, homecoming tonight and also a 70s reunion for the 70s football players as Winchester gets the snap. It's going to fall incomplete. Pressure there by Jalen Nido. Yeah, the defensive line did a great job of getting pressure on him, kind of on that rollout, nowhere to go with the ball, and just – Kind of dumped it off there to avoid the sack and brings up another third and long. Yeah, we didn't really talk about that during we, – we had it playing during the uh, halftime show, but 70s players, uh, so every home game they're going to have a decade. They're going to they're gonna um, honor a, players from the decade. This week it was the 70s. Next uh, Bethany game it will be the 80s. And uh, very heartfelt letter uh, read by Skeeter Sampler from Coach Griffin. And ball's loose on the snap. I think they're able to come up with it. We'll see here. Coach is saying, Cats Bulldogs, Coach is saying they've got it. But I think Winchester's able to fall on top of it. Escaping disaster here on this drive. Yeah, Coach Griffin, like I said, right, wrote a heartfelt letter to those guys from the 70s. Cash football is this year 50 years old. Um, Coach Griffin is, is from here and played here. And so uh, – he obviously understands the her the the uh, history of the program and things like that. So it's great to see them reaching out to those old players and getting them involved. And they're all cashing on a good run right now. I mean, they they Coach Griffin is building a great program here. Uh, a lot of it starts from the bottom to the top. I mean, Winchester takes the snap, looking deep. It's going to be thrown behind as Reed Lyon with nice coverage down yeah. the middle on number four. That's John Dobson. He's building a complete program here, that which is a great deal. Um, myself and Del Pauly were talking about this a little earlier today. Um, they're running the same offense from seventh grade on up. So by the time these kids are freshmen and sophomore and getting time with the varsity, they've been running the same offense. So they know it like the back of their hands at that point. They're running the program the way it should be run. They're running it, like I said, from bottom to top and making sure that uh, everybody's on the same page as far as the offense, as far as the defense, as far as the weight program. So it's a good deal there uh, that he's got going right now. First playoff victory in a long time last year. And 
unfinished business this year to kind of get all the way uh, to that state final game. That's a hand up to Reed Lyons. Catch Bulldogs take over on the turnover on downs. Reed Lyons stretched out. There's going to be another flag on the far sideline. When it's out there like that, probably a hold on the outside receiver. Cash Bulldog defense again stepping up here in the last drive. The last couple times they've uh, needed to get stopped, and they've got them. Yeah, absolutely. We were 19 seconds away from uh, from making it seven quarters in a row without a score. So defenses gave up some big plays and stuff, but when they uh, get inside the red zone there, kind of bow their back and make sure they don't give up that touchdown. So Yeah, bend but don't break. Yeah. That's, a, that's that's work tonight. Again, this Plainview team is a good team. They're definitely facing some injuries and some things yeah. tonight. But, uh, so you're not seeing them at full capacity. But this is still a good team in 3A nonetheless. What's well, a good test for the Cash Bulldogs in their home opener. As we have 19 seconds left here in the third quarter. Hunter Glenn goes up under center. Kyneel Daniels behind him in the backfield. It's George Harper in motion. Handoff up the middle. Kyneel Daniels. A gain of about... Uh, three on the play. That's how we'll uh, end. Yeah, I think we'll get to the fourth quarter yeah, on this how, one. So we'll end your third quarter. Cash Bulldogs still lead this game 20 to nothing now. The score of the Plainview Indians. We'll be right back with the fourth quarter here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network as we're set for the fourth quarter. This game, Cash leads 20 0. A score that's that kind of struck me as uh, surprising there. Tuttle, yes, absolutely. Tuttle's winning the new cows, and the Racers are tied up in that game. Tuttle now number two in the state. That's 21 21 in the fourth quarter. In fact, Newcastle last week, they had their first game. They were scheduled to go play in Kansas somewhere. Of course, the COVID stuff, that got canceled. And so they played the Mustang JV team, who's yeah. a 6A team. And so you're playing guys that are obviously, you know, uh, still your size or bigger <laughs> in right. many cases. And now they are at home against Tulsa, the home opener for, for Newcastle. And again, you can watch the Newcastle race here on the Oklahoma uh, Sports Network. And that game is tied at 21 in the fourth quarter. We'll keep you uh, updated on that. As the Cash Bulldogs get the ball. Line up start. a little pistol formation yeah. here. And Flair kind of dans out to the right, and the pass will be to him. He's another flag in the backfield. If that's a hold, I'm probably going to decline that because it'll still bring up a third and long, but maybe push him back another 10. And Yeah, kind of a little kind of a flare out there to kind of probably was looking to hit uh, – Hunter Tate on the seam, uh, but saw that it was covered and went to his outlet route, and Kynell just couldn't hang on there. It will be a half the distance. They will take the penalty. No, it looks like they're going to decline it now. No, now they're not. So, yeah, it's going to be yeah, – no, so they're going to decline, so it's going to bring it third and long. Yeah, you really don't want to give us dangerous offense any extra plays. No, because it was only going to be half the distance anyway. Yeah, not a lot to gain out of Yeah, so – so that'll bring up a third and long. Not the situation the Cash Bulldogs want to be no. in. As Carlos Harbin goes to the far side of the field with Jalen Lenido. George Harper at the bottom of your screen. Hunter Tate also to the right. Harper in motion. The handoff will go to Harper. Cuts it back up the Great middle. Cut. Able to be dragged down there. By number one for the Plainview Indians. Yeah, great job by number one there. Kind of looked like he was getting that outside shoulder. It was a good cut underneath, but kind of slid underneath that uh, blocker there and was able to hold on to George there for a short yardage run, which brings up a fourth and fairly long. So we're going to see Eli tonight. I think this is our first punt tonight. 
Kind of had some turnovers and some odd things happen. So this, oh, he was uh, not that's ready another for odd it. thing. Get, that Get it out of there. He is, oh, that is not that's good. not good. And it's going to be the Plainview ball from the five-yard line of the Cash Bulldogs. He wasn't ready. No, Eli that. was kind of looking over here to the sideline to see what was going on. And uh, unfortunately, the ball was snapped. I don't know if it was premature or not, but the ball was snapped and wasn't able to hang on to it. By the time he was able to get it and try and kick it away, it, uh, it was blocked and gives Plainview a very short field here to work with. So playing you, giving some life. 11-14 left in the third quarter. Yeah, still got yeah. fourth quarter. Or fourth quarter. Excuse still me. got uh, still got a lot of ball game left. Though. If they score right here, I mean, it's gonna make things a little a little interesting moving forth into the fourth quarter. See if defense can stay with their bend but don't break philosophy. Winchester in the backfield. He'll keep the ball. Loss of about one or two on the play. Nice job by the catch defense. Yeah, kind of just a quarterback ISO play there, and defense kind of sniffed it out fairly early and came up with a big hit. And let's see right here if we can get a big stop. Winchester gets the play. Breaks the huddle. That's, again, number 22, Blue Norman in the backfield with Tyler Winchester. Chester gets a snap. It's going to be handed up the middle to Blue Norman. He gets down, back to original line of scrimmage, down to about the five-yard line, maybe the four. Yeah, great job of filling the gap right there by Antonio Austin there. Comes up with the – met the running back right there in the hole and was able to bring him down for a short yardage gain and brings up some big third down right here. Bring Caden Pickens in, maybe as a blocker. Cash brings the big boys in as number 57. Jeffrey Padiaker comes back. Into the game, and number 55, Alden Connerman steps out for a play. Big third and five. Yeah. The Cash Bulldogs has come up big so far. Let's see if they can do it again. As Winchester's in the backfield with Caden Pickens. That all sides or something. But a broken up mind. play, no matter what the deal here. They will lose five yards back to the 10 yard line, bringing up a fourth down. Obviously, uh, yeah, we don't have to go for this. Yeah, down by 20 in the fourth quarter. I think, yeah, three points isn't going to really help much so look for them to go for it right here kind of an odd play right there um, I don't know if the ball was snapped sooner and it was kind of a broken odd mistimed play but it is what it is and live to play the next down on fourth down here be a big stop for the defense here Plainview he needs to hurry they've only got five yeah I think he's gonna have to call a timeout they're hurrying to the line. They're going to try to get it yeah, off. Yeah, he's going to call it. No. I'm going to say he called it before. Yeah. They're going to call a timeout. Plainview will take a timeout. We'll take it with them here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. It's time to start cracking it, cooking it, buttering it, grilling it, baking it, brewing it. McDonald's fires up the griddle every morning so you can start digging in and enjoying it. And saving with the mix and match deal. Choose from sausage McMuffin with egg, bacon egg and cheese biscuit, or bacon egg and cheese McGriddles. Two for just $4. Add any size soft drink for just a buck. Make your morning routine a little better. Back here in Cash, Oklahoma at Ulrich Stadium as it is 9.05 left in the fourth quarter on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Cash Bulldogs lead 20 to nothing over Plainview. Plainview coming out for a fourth, fourth and down. 10. Cash faithful get louder as Winchester has Kate Pickens in the backfield. Winchester takes the snap. The yeah, it's not going to be oh, almost oh. a great catch. Yeah. Really not the best A little bit throw. short. Great job. By, we just talked about that kind of during the break. George Harper's really starting to step up as a cornerback. Yeah, from week one to now, we, yeah, you know, yeah, a lot of changes. Way, way, way different. Uh, he got he got beat deep a couple times in week one, but since that point, he's or week uh, zero. Today. Week zero, sorry. Hard time. Um, getting, I have a hard time getting around that. Right, um, but he's really stepped up in the yeah. last couple games. Keegan Fink also yep. playing the other corner has uh, been lights out the last couple of games. So good to see those DBs kind of getting back into the rhythm of things and 
And uh, they're going to be tested later on the season, so it's good to see them kind of starting to step up. Sutter Glenn will bring the offense back out. Eli Angel backed up here, looked to probably run the ball out of here, but or take never know. In motion. Have to kind of Daniels up the middle, spotting down. We tackled at about the 16 yard line. A gain of six yards on the play for Kyle Daniels. Yeah, I expect us to kind of run some clock right here and and a heavy dose of Kynell and maybe Tom's and Hunter Tate on some sweeps or something. And it'd be nice to have a really long drive to end right. this game here. Yeah, it's just been a. It's just kind of been a. Not an not a not an ideal pretty night. Uh, it's beautiful as weather goes, but not ideal and pretty as far as the football on the field. But the big takeaway is twenty to nothing and getting out of here, hopefully unscathed with injuries as well. I assume the Plain View Indians can get healthy again. This is a team that's going to do some damage in three A. Their defense is uh, yeah, their defense super impressive. Their defense is very good. They've got some good running backs back there. Um, if Pearson can kind of get back, one good thing for them is Winchester's looked fairly good at the quarterback position, so hopefully that can he can step up as the year goes forward and uh, Pearson can stay on the outside. And that bodes well for them moving forward. It's Hunter Glenn puts Kyle Daniels in motion, gives it to Kyle Daniels on the right side. Good nice cut. read to cut up inside and get the first down for the Cash yeah. Bulldogs. Yeah, great job right there to kind of know where the sticks were, cut on the inside of that, and uh, pick up the big first down and churn a little bit more clock here. Plainview's only got one timeout left, 7.33 left in the fourth quarter. Going with an empty set here. Kind of in motion again. This time it's going to be a screen out, 200 Tate. Cuts it back inside. Uh, not not a whole lot of room there. No, but we talked about that a little early on that one. On the last one, he threw it right where it needed to be, kind of that front number. He can catch it moving forward. And that one was a little bit low, so Hunter had to stop all his momentum to catch it. Did a great job of catching it, but then he has to restart. So that makes it a little bit difficult. You want those little flare passes right there. You want to hit him on that front shoulder pass. So that way he's moving forward when he's catching the ball and can get that thing rolling. Artate in motion. Handoff's going to be to kind of Daniels again. Whole Stacked field up. right there by Mr. Pickens. Everywhere. I mean, I'd love to know how many he's got tonight, too. Oh, he's a double digits tonight. There's no doubt about that. He is wherever the ball is. I mean, that's a testament to the way he can read and play. Reminds me a little. He's a little undersized. Looks like a little Zach Thomas out there yeah, back in yeah, the day. Oh, man, that's, uh, that's going back there a little <laughs> bit. Yeah. 6.30 left in the game. Hunter Glenn Gins goes up under center. Hunter Tate in motion. Handoff. Oh, it's a yep. bad read there. Hunter Glenn keeps it. Sacked at the. Again, Pickens just knew exactly where he was going right there. and 17. Comes up with the big tackle. Caden Pickens again. Forces a punt. Let's see if we can get this one out regularly tonight. Six minutes left in the fourth quarter. Carlos Harbin runs onto the field late. George Harper also moving to the right side with him. One return man back for Plainview. What's going on now? The whistles again on the field. The legal substitution, Plainview. So that'll give us five yards to work out of there. Yeah, it will be a legal substitution on the Plainview Indians. It'll make it a fourth and six. <clears throat> Must have had 12 people on the field. In the formation, so. That's number 16, Will Morris, the 5'9", 150 sophomore back for Plainview. See if he like can get this one out of here. Tried to go for the block. But Very nearly got a fair catch call for at the 41. Hey, that's a flag, that's a flag, that's a flag. Come on. Yeah, there was a fair catch called for, and the referee. Okay, yeah, the referee on this side saw it. Yeah, he got it back Back judge there. didn't see it, I guess, kind of. <laughs> back was turned to him when he kind of threw that hand up. and So Plainview should have the ball here from their own 41. There's a flag on the field, so. Yeah, I, th I think it pushes him back a little. 
officiating crew. Whoa! Okay. They're going to wave off the flag, but it still will be a fair catch at the 41. Now, again, they they do that, but like you said, they're trying to take care of the player, trying to keep him yeah, safe. Yeah. Just the same way when you call for a fair catch, um, you gain an advantage because you try to run with that, and so they're trying to keep everybody safe. And uh, Usually they will call out a flag. Yeah. But at the very least here, they're going to bring it back to where he did yeah, that's, call for the fair catch. That's the important part. They're bringing it back to where he did call for the fair catch. We hit the 41 plane. He's got to get something going here quickly. 540 left in here. Again, they're not in a, uh, the best position. Caden Pickens is in the backfield with Winchester. We're down uh, their top two quarterbacks and probably their top two players overall. As the handoff goes to Caden Pickens. Tough runner. Sheds a couple tackles. Ball. Ball. Oh, it's on the ground. And it is down it there. It's down. A I think Eli Hood we'll might see who have gets it. it. The Cash Bulldogs do have the ball. Ethan Hood. Sorry there. Ethan Hood. But oh, huge hit there by Reed hit. Lyons. Yeah, big hit by Reed Lyons on Caden Pickens causing – the turnover, Ethan Hood comes up with the fumble. Cash Bulldogs have now got the ball on the 46-yard line for the Plainview Indians. Yeah, you got to think about this. I mean, coming into this game, Reese Taylor for Plainview, the starting quarterback, was also their leading rusher. So, I mean, that's a big person that's out tonight. And then, obviously, Mr. Pearson gets hurt there sometimes early, in, well, late in the second quarter, and he hasn't been back on the field since. So, um, playing under man tonight, but uh, hanging pretty close with uh, our Cash Bulldogs here. So good luck to them as the season moves forward. Hopefully they can get some of those injuries cleaned up. And Is that Eli? Eli Angel with the handoff of the middle He down. fumbled it. Yeah, he did. Caden Pickens again, that guy. Mama, Fumble, there goes right, that gave man. it right back yep, to him. Um, Caden Pickens. Man. He's a player. We got to. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know enough about him. He's only him. a junior, I think. Yeah. So he's I he's mean, a little undersized. I mean, so, they list him at six foot, but I don't. No offense or anything. Yeah, I just don't think he's six foot. And typically, you know, when you get out to the, you know, this because of the division you played in, uh, especially I, I think about basketball. I know this is because I know a lot of basketball players are playing lower levels. It's usually not the skill level. It's usually a size thing, right? right. And and with him, I mean, there are there's NFL players that have made it, and you have to be super talented and. I get the right thing, but he is definitely a he's a college level player. So oh yeah, no doubt level. about that. Nothing doing in there. Nice job on the cash defense. Cash defense, we cannot say enough about them. They're five minutes away from pitching their second shutout in a row. No, that was a great play right there by by seventy nine Joseph Brown there and um Great job of the defensive line tonight. I mean, we talked about the size advantage that we had. We have kind of been wearing them out a little here in the second half. Um, but that right there wasn't just necessarily being big and being bigger. I mean, defensive linemen have to have good feet, uh, yeah. have to have good hand play, and that was a good job by him fighting off that block and getting back there right away and bringing a big loss play. Winchester gets the snap, hands the ball, getting up the middle. A lot of running room. Nice job there by Jacob Turner. Yeah, Reed Lyon was able to kind of slow him up, but Jacob Turner was there to fold back and get the tackle. That's something we got to clean up moving forward going into district play. We got a lot of gash, uh, big yardage runs tonight by Plainview, and obviously not going to make Coach Griffin and Coach Thompson happy with the defensive side of things. But like I said, it's kind of that bend but don't break. Once they get inside those 20s, kind of hunker down a little and – Make sure that uh, they don't punch it in. Hunter Young in the backfield with Winchester. And if we'll go to Hunter Young. Gets down to it's still going. But he's going to be about the 43-yard line of cash. Four minutes left in this game. And like you said, you know, it's a – Pretty close to pitching another shutout here, but you've got to you got to you got to give them something to work on. And obviously, yeah. you're pleased with the shutouts. But like you said, some of those big plays when you play, we saw that early against El Reno in the year. Those big plays can keep a team in the game and give a right. team a pretty big advantage. And we're really not a quick strike offense necessarily. Not not built for that. And so we don't want to give up the big plays. No, no, not at all. And those are momentum plays. Yeah, I mean, once, huge. once once. You get two or three of those in a in a drive. I mean, okay, Eli kicks it to the end zone, and they've got to go 80 yards. But if they get, you know, two 15, three 15-yard runs, I mean, they're right there in your territory and, and moving downhill. So 
got, definitely got to clean some things up during this off week. Um, probably going to be a little bit harder of an off week than, than you would think because of the sloppiness of this game. Coach would definitely want to tie some things up and loosen and tighten some things up. But uh, third down and four as the handoff again goes up the middle. She has a couple tackles. Still going to be short of the first down by about a yard. Again, that's Hunter Young. But – but at the end of the day, I mean, in Oklahoma high school football, your, your non-district games are meant to kind of figure out who you are and what right. you need to work on. Uh, and if you come out of there 2-1, and one, as it looks like we're probably going to with our only loss against a very good 5A El Reno team, I would think you'd take that. Um, but obviously um, got one of the hardest districts in the state, definitely in 4A, and uh, got a lot of things to improve on to make sure that we continue that uh, that philosophy of unfinished business moving forward. Wichester gets the ball, fourth down and one here. It's going to be, gonna really be close. close. I think he might be short. Yeah, I think he's short with the way they're lining it up. Short. And the Cash Bulldogs will take over another turnover on downs. The 2.22 mm -hmm. left in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. Tuttle Tigers able to escape Racer Stadium. But the 24 to 21 win again. You can watch the Newcastle Racers here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. We'll be visiting that very stadium here in just a few weeks. A lot of offensive talent on the Newcastle Racer team. They've been affected by injuries as well. The last couple of years, it's really affected them. But Cash Bulldogs will take over here with 2:22 left in the game. One timeout by Plainview. I expect us to probably keep the ball on the ground here. Try and get out of here uh, unscathed there with another bagel. Um, two in a row, potentially. That'd make eight quarters without a score on this defense. But a lot of things to work on. But also some good things to to build upon, too. Eli Angel with the handoff up the middle. Gained of about two on the play. Heritage Hall does end up beating Clinton 14-7. That's a nice game there by Clinton Heritage Hall. A very talented team. Tecumseh up 13-6 over Lone Grove in the third quarter. I'm sure it's further along than that. Weatherford again beating a Dorian, Dorian Plumley list. El Reno team 41-7 there with eight minutes left in the fourth quarter. Wagner only up 15-10 over Tahlequah. Chandler up 41-14 over Bristow. Blanchard all over Elgin 55-7 in the fourth quarter. Yeah, Weatherford's going to be a good football team, but I think that score uh, is a little indicative of Plumlee being out uh, than, than it's how good they're going to be. Eli Angel getting up the middle. Elk City with a 68th spot on Guyman, still 12 minutes to go in the fourth quarter there. Wow. Elk City's got to be, I mean, to score that many points, I mean, you've got to be improved. So uh, that's going to gonna be make another harder game for us in district as we move forward. You heard Coach Griffin. He's talked the last couple of weeks. They – there's really no off week here. No. I mean, you want to say just from the casual fan perspective that we well, you know what Elk City has been in the past, but again, that's a uh, you can't <laughs> you can't you can't take anybody for granted, especially no. now that you're seeing they're putting up points like that. Because you go in and you take somebody from Brandon and you get an L, and that really affects your season. Well, it's just no different than what we did last year with Marlowe. I mean, right. Mar we came in here with a a different uh, game plan, saying, "Oh, well, we're going to work on this, and we're going to work on that, and yada yada yada," <laughs> and. Uh, we had no no answer to Marlowe, who came out kind of flat, and they just kind of kicked our butt. So uh, can't take anybody lightly in the game of football. Everybody, I mean, you take somebody lightly, you get hit in the mouth, and things get ugly from there. <laughs> that was number six, Jacob Patnote on the carry. His first carry of the game. Bring up a fourth and four. 30 seconds left in this game. They're going to let the play clock run down. I think Vinny's going to go ahead and go on down to the field, catch up with Coach Griffin as we wind this one down. Cash Bulldogs are going to come away with a 20 to nothing win in their home opener of the 2020 season. Also homecoming night, a night where they honor the 1970s Cash Bulldogs, the, the founding fathers, if you will, of Cash Bulldogs football. We're going to take a timeout. We're going to keep it here. Just 10 seconds left in this game. Cash Bulldogs will have it fourth and four. Just a reminder, we will not be on air next week. We have an off week. Cash has an off week next week. We'll see you again two weeks here again at Ulrich Stadium as we get set to open up district play against 4A1 newcomers coming from 4A2 Bethany, who is playing tonight. Well, they were in a tight game earlier. I'll check on that score for you. 16-13. to 13, They now lead Woodward in the fourth quarter with 11 minutes left as we get set for the final snap of this game as they will go into a... Get all the starters out there. They're used to 
just sitting on this ball here, but I don't know what they're going to do with 10 seconds left on fourth down. As they set the ball ready for play, Hunter Glenn's going to get under center. He's going to hand the ball off to Hunter Tate on the outside edge. He's actually going to have first down and dangerous hit there as Hunter Glenn takes a shot to the head. He's down on the play right now. That's how we're going to end this game. We're going to take a break here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Catch Bulldogs win this one 20 to nothing over the Plainview Indians. It's a calling that's kept us free. It's a place to belong. What's the calling? It's doing a job that makes a difference. Serving your community and your country. It's part-time service where the impact is full-time. What's your calling? Air Force Reserve. We know exactly what winter is like around here. A furnace tune-up by one hour heating and air conditioning can fix little problems before they become big trouble. The way I see it, you'll stay warm all winter. Oh, you can see the future. Nope, but I do see a furnace with a long productive life, and you might get a lower power bill. Positive energy. I like it. What's not to like? Right now, get a $59 furnace tune-up. Your comfort is just a call away. Call Looking for an opportunity to advance in the workplace? Republic Paperboard Company in Lawton, Oklahoma offers competitive wages as well as excellent benefits. Republic is a quality producer of paperboard products used in the manufacturing of gypsum wallboard with advanced technology and a committed staff and makes them one of the premier paperboard companies in the U.S. using 100% recycled paper fiber. Republic Paper partners with many local organizations to build a better community. Go to republicpaperboard.com. Arrow Sign Company has been serving Oklahoma and surrounding states for over 60 years. As a family-owned business, our focus has always been on driving people to your door, not just selling you a sign. From custom sign design and manufacturing to installation and service, Arrow Sign has the knowledge and experience to deliver the ideal sign for you while using materials of the highest quality to ensure that your sign will look great for years and years to come. We design and manufacture our signs for longevity so you get the greatest return on investment possible. Arrow Sign Company, helping your business thrive since 1950. And we're back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network at the Cash Bulldogs. Wrap up another shutout with a 20 to nothing win over the Plainview Indians. And get ready to head into the off week. Two and one. Head into district play. Eighth consecutive quarter without a score for the Cash Bulldog defense. A bit of a sloppy game here. A little bit <laughs> testy, if you will, kind of back and forth uh, throughout the game. And uh, the Plainview Indians exited the field rather quickly. And Coach Griffin is down there talking to his players now as they were able to get this. Going to 2-1 and one now. Number six probably going to stay there, maybe move up a spot or two heading into the off week again where they'll come back from the off week. We'll start district play against the Bethany Broncos as we are waiting. Benny down there, he will get Coach Griffin to do the post-game interview here in just a minute. We want to thank you guys for joining us here tonight. We appreciate everybody that's been watching, wherever you're watching us from. Vinny is waiting for Coach Griffin. Hunter Tate was injured there near the end. He got up and walked up the field, and so that's good news. A lot of, a lot of injuries, uh, players in this game able to get up and, uh, and be okay. Uh, we're thankful for that as they head into this, this off week. They do have the extra week now to, to heal up a little bit. Uh, Coach Griffin in the, uh, the coaches show uh, over at Salas's on Tuesday nights. You can be over there and catch that and. Catch them on Taco Tuesdays over there every Tuesday night on the Coaches Show. 
But last week he said, just like Vinny said earlier in the show or in the game today, that uh, Coach Griffin schedules those off weeks um, just like that, right before district play, because the district play is what matters the most. That's what's going to determine your playoff position, your playoff seating, and how you're going to, to go from there. And so he usually uses those off weeks for that week, right before you get into district play. And they will open up again with Bethany, uh, the newcomers to 4A1. 4A1, again, one of the toughest districts there is. There's no doubt about that. As we saw New, Newcastle tonight take total. Newcastle probably maybe, you know, picked, I think, fourth or fifth in the district this year. Uh, just missed out on the playoffs last year and uh, almost beats Tuttle, the Tuttle Tigers, number, I think, number two in the state at home. So the racers are going to be tough, and, and this 4A District 1 is going to be tough overall. As we get set, as Coach Griffin is now heading over to Vinny there, who's on the 30-yard line. We appreciate him giving us this chance here to, to hear what he has to say after this game. Hey, guys, down here with Coach Griffin after the win tonight. Hey, a win's a win, 20 to nothing, but uh, not the smoothest play game, kind of some sloppiness. No real rhythm, I guess, is kind of kind of what we noticed up there in the booth. So what can you say about tonight's game? Well, you know, I feel like early in the game we got our running game going like we wanted. I knew that they were set up to stop our, uh, our jet sweep, and so Connell had a nice night. Uh, they were just telling me he had 198 yards or something like that. Uh, and we knew that was going to kind of happen. But what bothers me is we come out the second half. Yeah, we subbed some players here and there, but I just don't like to see sloppy play at any time. And, you know, we found some kids that could handle pressure, and we've dang sure found some that couldn't handle the pressure uh, that are coming off the bench. So we've got to get better at that and, and, and just disappointing the sloppy play in the second half. No doubt about that. But like I said, at the end of the day, defense again with another shutout tonight. What can you say about the way the defense has played in these last two games? Well, I was really, really frustrated when we went into halftime and, uh, you know, I, I, I had our coaches make some adjustments technique-wise. Uh, our linebackers were, were not tackling very well in the beginning and they stepped up in the second half and the adjustments that we made uh, technique-wise at halftime uh, fixed what was problem in the first half. Coach, going into an off week this week, obviously, a lot of things to work on, but a lot of things to uh, also kind of be impressed about. So what's kind of this week going to look like moving into district play next week? Well, you know, last year I took the approach that I let the kids get a little bit of a rest and, and on the bye week. Uh, this next week I'm going to turn the fire up. Okay. We're going to get after it. All right. Coach, congratulations on the win tonight and look forward to seeing you in two weeks against Bethany here at Aldrick Stadium Open District Play. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Guys, back up to you guys. And that's Coach Vinny. Uh, Oh, Vinny, <laughs> Coach Vinny, he acts like he's coach up here sometimes, doesn't he? Uh, so uh, that's Vinny down there with Coach. Coach, obviously, uh, got some things to work on uh, heading into uh, the off week, just like you said there. He said it's going to be a, a pretty <laughs> pretty tough off week on the guys. They got some things to work on. But the good news is they're able to come out of here with the win, moving to 2-1 and one on the season, the lone loss to El Reno in the first game of the year with two shutouts in a row, and now they're heading into the off week uh, with the chance to go into district play, and we know of this unfinished business. They want to win the district, and they're going to have to take this one week at a time, and uh, the win uh, this week is going to propel them, no doubt about that. There's some sloppy things, some things they need to clean up. Coach Sakaino Daniels almost had a 200-yard game tonight. That was pretty apparent there with 198 yards, a great game from the run, senior running back here at Cash. And so we will we'll put a bow on this one right here. Uh, we'll see you guys not next week. We'll have an off week, but we'll see you guys in two weeks here back at Ulrich Stadium here.